Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value came in, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to haters. How they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Okay, so Adam, first of all, you're supposed to, apparently you're not supposed to be here. Yeah. Because people thought that was your last week last week. Oh, uh, people have been, you know, rooting for my downfall do you know, for do you, three years. Oh, wait, do you know how many, do you know how many, oh you guys God. know how many Instagram wait, messages this, I got of what? people going, two, two-sided, hell yeah, Pat got rid of them. And then other people going, you're stupid and loud. And I was like, good, good. <laughs> Anyways, good. we're, we're uh, live. This is supposed to be birthday uh, dry out week. Yes, Adam is back from, uh, you were where? You were Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Go check it out if you uh, want to have an alternative to Aspen or Vail. It's only the rich people hang out. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's, that's where no, Vinny, it's kind of a cool, chill place. Actually. Yeah, that's yeah. actually where Vinny would pinch bears. I, yeah, because poking him is too much. This is an inside joke. Vinny yeah. was pinching bears this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, But by the way, so I was gone for, I uh, missed... I think two pot. Did I miss anything? Nothing, anything crazy happened, happened, happened no, last no, week. Anything no. happened with Roland Martin or Jason Whitlock? <laughs> no, no they Roger Stone. Just, anything? No, bro, anything of that love, love was in the air, and you missed oh, that. Definitely, absolutely. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Good, good to see Guys, other people catching the uh, PBDs uh, other side, <laughs> other, than, other than me. Listen, <laughs> let's try to be fearless today. This yeah. is all I want to do. Okay, <laughs> today's podcast. Right, let's try to kind of like honestly, like straight up. I want us to kind of. Uh, if any of the stories scare you, tell me. I won't bring it up to you okay. if, if you're not comfortable with it. Okay. So let's get into it. These are some of the stories that we plan on talking about today. Number one, that's not Ron, is it? Ex-President Donald Trump posts a photo of uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis allegedly drinking and partying with high school girls. Okay, here we go. Governor voters, uh, GOP voters are picking DeSantis over Trump in a hypothetical head-to-head matchup. This is CNBC. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, Cuomo blasts Biden over migrant crisis. The southern uh, states were right. Cuomo's going after Biden. What does that mean? We have no clue. We'll talk about it. Fed official on uh, officials on board with more modest pace of interest rate hikes. Jamie Dimon warns it's too early to declare victory against inflation. Google to beef up search on AI. Tom's got a lot of thoughts on that with Alphabet. It's interesting what's going on there. The layoffs, whether it's Disney 7000, whether it's R. Kathy Wood talking about the reasoning behind the layoffs, or Yahoo announcing that 20% uh, of the folks are going to be uh, laid off at Yahoo. Wozniak goes after Elon Musk. Okay, Musk fires a top Twitter engineer. People are curious on why that is taking place. Uh, this guy named LeBron James became the all-time scorer, but we're not going to cover that. We're just recognizing it's a big deal. Congratulations to the guy. High school students suspended and arrested for saying there's only two genders. Toronto Sun. Catastrophic. Gay couple charged with raping. Sons pimped them out to pedophiles. Is that the story you... Pimped them out, recorded it, oh and then made porn, and then, yeah. Is this the... They're going... They're, they got nine death nine penalties? Nine death penalties, but I have an, I have an opinion what on what should really happen there. to Californians those guys. Californians are pouring into Nevada... And people in Nevada are not happy about it. And then at the end, maybe we'll make some uh, oh, wow. Super Bowl does, predictions. Uh, does Nevada have state income tax? Maybe and, we and should look into that. Yeah, we should. Know. Maybe there's a benefit about it. <laughs> uh, uh, so anyways, by the way, uh, something happened with O'Keefe. I know you're looking into the story. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about O'Keefe as well on what happened. But why don't we go right into the economy? Uh, page five, uh, uh, if you want to go into page five, first story is going to be a... I believe it's a Reuters story. Let me see if I can find Fed it. Fed official here. story? Yeah, let me get to it. Okay, here we go. Fed officials on board with more modest rate hikes. This is a Reuters story. According to Fed officials, more interest rate, interest rate hikes are expected as the central bank aims to cool inflation. New York Fed President John Williams stated that moving a federal funds rate of between a half a point, I'm sorry, five points, to five and a quarter seems a very reasonable view of what we'll need to do this year. However, he also noted that the Fed would probably be able to make uh, take smaller steps relative to the pace of past tightening campaigns. Jerome Powell added that if we continue to get, for example, strong labor market reports or higher, higher inflation reports, it may well be the case we have to do more. Okay. Williams also emphasized the importance of monetary policy to get and to stay levels will strain. Da, da, da. Okay, anyways, um, Tom, what are your thoughts when you hear a story like this? Based on what Powell is saying, and last month, 517,000 job report, new jobs, which is a good number, 
And then we're going to talk about the layoffs here in a minute. What do you think is going to be happening with rates here? Wow, there's a whole bunch of things to unpack here. First of all, we can talk about the jobs really, really fast and about how some of these jobs are people getting back to work after COVID, and it's a lot of hospitality jobs that are in there. But when you get that report that the White House does a victory lap on, down the street, Powell sees that and goes, i got to keep raising rates. This, this economy is too hot. So it's, it's uh, does the White House really want Powell to be reacting like that? And Powell's- It's important what you just said. It's important what you just said. So the more the numbers look better, the more he will increase rates. Because remember, what's Powell looking for? 2%. Inflation. He's yeah. looking for 2%. Until he can see 2%, he's staying up in the bedroom with the cheerleader. So we... That's right. You know, We can't forget the cheerleader. We can't That's forget the about best. that. Shout, Shout out to the that cheerleader. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, Shout out. Powell. Mary. Shout out. Pounding the poor economy. But um, <laughs> So that's part one. Part two, part two of this is what Powell is saying is, okay, I'm, I'm only going to go to quarter points and I'm going to stretch them out a little bit, but he's still raising rates. He's still raising. So what he's saying is, yeah, the economy now has a great point, is now got uh, about 50%, heading towards 60%, so it's still an F, heading toward a D, but it's getting better. That's all Powell's saying is I'm going to stretch it out, but I'm still raising rates. So rates are still going to be going up. Mortgages aren't going to be going down. And what was very interesting, and I flipped you a text on this uh, yesterday, is but Jamie Dimon is saying, hey, we're not, not out of the woods yet. And down the street at B of A, because, mm -hmm. you know, Jamie's uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, down the street at B and A, their research yesterday was talking about the same charts that we talked about on the podcast almost a month ago about savings and credit card debt. And they're saying it's not going to take much unemployment for this to be a very hard landing. So we're not out of the woods yet, and I think that's what uh, all of this is pointing to. Here, here's what's crazy. Do you know uh, when is the last time? Do you know how many times we increased the rates last year, 2022? Not including when we did this year. How many times we increased rates last year? Six times? Nine? Seven yes, times. Six, seven last time. year was seven times. Okay. Do you know when was the last time we increased the rates seven times in one year? Do you know when's the last time we did that? Nineteen. What's that? Wait, wait. Is that 506? Yes. 2005 is the last yeah, time we yeah, increased yeah. it seven times, okay? Mm. We did eight times, uh, one time, which uh, we increased it eight times in a year. But uh, So anytime the rates go the way they're going, what follows is unemployment. That's the Phillips curve. The Phillips curve says interest rates, inflation high, unemployment low. You flip it, inflation, uh, un unemployment high, inflation interest rates are low. So mm -hmm. those things go against each other, right? So the way it's looking right now, if they keep pushing, I know, Vinny, this is something you study very closely. If they yeah. keep pushing this, unemployment is going to crash tremendously. By the way, fun fact, fun fact. You ready for this? Yes, sir. How many times you think we lowered interest rates the most in a single year? What is the record of the most times we ever lowered interest. What was the year and how many times was it? Hmm. I'd be so curious enough if you know. You're probably not going to get it right. So don't go to the year you're thinking you're going to go because it's economic expansion. It's a different year. What is the most times we lowered interest rates in a year? I just want you to know, before, why did you guys think? I just went from fearless to fearful. Like right now, it just happened. I'm fearful. What's the most? What do you think? Was it 2008 when we dropped everything to a half a point and we dropped like five times? No, what is the most times we lowered most interest times? rates in a year? Once I'm I'm guessing this is pure speculation it was under Ronald Reagan. In the okay, early so 80s. so it was 2001. Okay, okay. but under then here's Bush. the question: How many times did we lower it? How many times did we lower it in, in one year? year? In one year, it's a crazy number. Like I had to keep reading this article over and over and over because I couldn't believe it. Is it eight? nine times? Was that the was that the nine time drop? It was in 2001, and and people are commenting right now because they googled it 11 times oh my in 2001. God. Yeah, wow. Is that that crazy? Boom, 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 to that you. was a nuclear winter. That was that a tough was recession. Like lower and lower and lower and back to back to back to back. So look, you know the the, the feds control what happens to the economy. Okay, mm -hmm. when you hear the saying Jerome Powell's the most powerful, it's not because he you know it's just a staying. He really is. But right now, everybody is trying to kind of get Powell to play along. And Powell, the good thing about Powell, which is kind of weird, he's the the guy that's the Fed chair who was put in there by a guy named Donald. And he's still there by a guy named Joe, okay? Mm -hmm. Which means he doesn't he's not he doesn't favor the right, he doesn't favor the left. He used to work for Carlisle Group with uh, Rubenstein. So to him, he's just saying, guys, I have he's one dimensional, two percent. To get there, he's going to keep increasing interest rates, which is going to be very weird on how bad. Now everybody now is saying, well, it's going to be a soft landing. It's going to be a soft landing. 
It's going to be a soft landing. You know what's a great thing when people say things like that? Paranoia disappears. You know what, what happens when paranoia disappears? The, bi- the best opportunities come right after paranoia disappears. The best opportunities to things to buy is when people get cocky. People are starting to get a little bit cocky again about the fact that mm-hmm. this inflation thing, this recession thing is going to come by. Adam, what are you thinking? By the way, i just like to get a running tab. This is something we should consistently do. Rob, would you pull up the Fear Greed Index with CNN, what they typically oh, the market? monitor where the markets <laughs> yeah, yeah. are right now? That'd just be good to kind of monitor where in we general. Are. What do you think we, know, we were, we were We went from full-on fearful 30 days ago I think it's greed. to a little bit greedy right I, now. I, th- I think we are? I would say we're, I'd say we're in the greed. Fear Greed Index. I th- I'd say we're in the it's greed. Bit, oh, look at okay, that. Look at it. Now we are. It's yeah. getting oh, a little greedier. We're getting yeah. greedier. I think it was at 60-something percent a yep. week ago. So I don't know. We're We've... Moved out of the the fearful state of the economy into. And by, by the way, look point. look at what you're saying right there. This yeah. is very important. What Adam is saying. Zoom in a little bit. Zoom in. Look at one year ago. What was the score? Fear. Everybody was scared. Thirty three a year yeah. ago. About a month ago, we were fifty one. Yeah. So from fifty one, we've gone to seventy two. Yeah. And a week ago was seventy six, which is extremely greedy. I don't know. Interesting. The, yeah. the, how how it, and how it is so Adam, is, significantly. Is, so is this greedy for me? Meaning like people like you know the, the, their their cost of their houses are going down and people are Spending buying more, it. buying more. Yeah. You know, you're no longer like staying tight. You're Ninety nine cent store. You're not going there anymore. Oh you're not really? Going to the discount oh wow. Stores. It's the opposite of yeah. fear. It's like all right, let me get out there and explore a little. Fearful, bit. Fearful, fearless. Like Fe- people are fearless <laughs> today. People, today's fearless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think since you're 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 kind of giving us a history lesson on uh, the amount of. Uh, rate, uh, interest rate hikes and, and lowering it. I think it's important to, to, to note it's currently at 4.5%. We're talking about the Fed fund rate, right? And that's the, the rate at which, what, commercial banks loan each other overnight money to, to match reserves. Is out, that, that's essentially what that is, right, Tom? Uh, and it's obviously the Fed uses interest rates and rate hikes to cu- kind of cool inflation. Uh, stat for you. Um, we talk about what mortgage rates were in the – like the, uh-huh. Is this for sale or no? We should put it on for no, sale. No, I'm asking you a serious no, question. So I was okay, just no, looking at it. It looks sick. It looks Everybody's really- saying you look like Maverick. It looks sick on camera. It's dope. Guys, you know. But it's not for sale? No, it is for sale. You could buy it off my back right now. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got extreme greed no, right now, guys. That's right. I'm no longer fearful. For $3,000, my <laughs> shoes are for sale. But, <laughs> the, uh, anyway, just history lesson. We talked about how in the 80s, uh, interest rates, mortgages were double digits. Do you know what the Fed fund rate was in 1980 when Ronald Reagan took over presidency? 20%. That's what banks charged each other oh, wow. to borrow money. 20%? Are you kidding me? It's at 4.5%. By the way, it went down to 0% in 2008 and then during COVID. So these dramatic rate hikes and, and lowering the rates, this is essentially, this is what makes America tick, right? We get so caught up in politics and fuck Joe Biden and fuck Trump and this, that. But this is the, the we talk about Jerome Powell being the most powerful man in America. These rates are wildly different. And how does this affect you? This affects you with your mortgage, with your loans, with your car loans, with what you're paying in student loans, with it costs to borrow money, small business loans. These are the numbers you got to kind of pay attention Credit to. Yeah, so let me, let me, Credit let me just, cards, for it, sure. It goes right next to the story here to, to transition after perfect timing for this. Jamie Dimon warns it's too early to declare victory against inflation. J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon suggests that the Federal Reserve could raise interest rates higher than expected if price pressure pr- persists. His comments come amid growing signs of inflation in the U.S. economy, including the strong January jobs report. Diamond says people should take a deep breath on this one before they declare victory because a month numbers looked good. The hiring surge in January has complicated the Fed's uh, fight to lower uh, uh, prices and tame inflation. Some of the which uh, uh, stems from the imbalanced labor market. Employers added a whopping 517,000 jobs. That's what I talked about earlier. Nearly triple what Wall Street expected. By the way, that is insane. Once again, like to talk about the timing was perfect right before uh, State of the Union speech for President Biden. 517,000 jobs. They were expecting a third of that. Okay. While the unemployment rate has dropped to 3.4% first time since May of 1969. Okay, May of 1969, the Fed last week voted to raise its benchmark interest rates to 45 to 4.75 mm-hmm. and signaled that more increases could come this year. So these are going together. Jamie's saying relax, pump the brakes, don't celebrate <clears throat> too early. But then layoffs. Let's talk about the layoff stories, okay? So layoff stories. Then you hear, if you can bring up the Disney. So Disney comes out and says we're cutting 7,000 jobs and slashing $5.5 billion in cost. 
as it unveils vast restructuring. This is a CNBC story. Dizzy said Wednesday it's planning on rec- planning to re- reorganize into three segments. While also cutting thousands of jobs and slashing costs, the media and entertainment giant said it would now be made up of three divisions. Disney Entertainment, which includes most of its streaming and media operations, ESPN division, that includes the TV network and ESPN streaming services, A, parks, experiences, and product units. The only reason a person like Bob Iger would do that is because maybe he's planning on selling one of the three. Who knows? That's Mm -hmm. the way you break it apart because to say, well, we're now three different. So, hey, if you want to buy one of them, well, we're kind of for sale. Again, I'm not saying anything. I'm just speculating. On Wednesday, during its quarterly earnings, called with investors, Disney also announced it would be cutting $5.5 billion in costs, which will be made up $3 billion from content, including sports, and remaining $2.5 billion from non-content cuts. Disney also said it would be eliminating 7,000 jobs from its workforce. That would be about 3% of roughly 220,000 people it employs. That's a lot of people. Tom, what are your thoughts on this? Well, there's a couple things going on here. First of all, if any of you out there has got some walking around money, you got a couple billion dollars, and you ever wanted to own ESPN, that thing is for sale. It's been bleeding subscribers for literally a decade, and it's not getting any better. You've seen big money um, celebrity commentators have been not renewed. They've trimmed. They've called the herd, as they say. And then on the other side of it, I, I dove into this. And it turns out Hulu's doing okay. So Hulu is doing okay. They had some international markets on streaming not doing so well. But this is basically Iger coming back to turn this into a business. And they really overhired in a lot of areas. They had a lot of international things. And then he's looking at this ESPN thing saying, what do I do with this? Because right now, Hulu and Disney Plus are really covering for ESPN on the streaming side because Disney's got a great portfolio, a great offering. And um, the, the problem is ESPN is dragging it. And then Parks are trying to make a comeback. And they've had all the controversy where we've heard about, oh, we're going to raise the price in Parks so that way there'll be less people in line for everybody that finally goes to the Parks. Remember that? They were mm-hmm, doing that around mm-hmm. December. Hey, any holiday travelers to go in? And then they've also got a, you know, Believe it or not, it's very real. What's going on in Florida with the uh, tax change, that's real. When companies go, you'll read about companies opening factories in places, and they get a tax break from the from the state where they build the factory or something. Automakers have made a ton of money. Alabama gave money to uh, uh, Mercedes, and uh, Tennessee gave money to Toyota. Please, open your factories here. Employ some workers. Help our local economy. And ESPN has kind of poked the bear in Florida. So you're seeing Bob Iger do what the CEO of Disney needed to do, but he has the permission to do it because he's coming back with an expectation for change. This would have been much more difficult with an entrenched CEO suddenly saying, I'm going to do all this stuff. So mm-hmm. so, he, so they bought what companies? Bob Iger's known. He was with Pixar. ABC, Disney for 38, 40 years, whatever the time. It's a great book if you've never read The Right of, of a Lifetime. lifetime. Yeah. Sick book. We had all employers leader. It's a phenomenal book to read. The guy's a beast. Like, Bob Iger is a beast. Okay, he's the type of guy that could have ran for president. He may one day do it. He's that capable. He's a heavyweight. So he bought Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars. Wow. What else did they buy? Big, ESPN. Big, a big Fox uh, library. Fox. Fox. He owns Com- owes Comcast I mean, $24 billion yeah, yeah. for the other part of Hulu. So, so do, you think, do you think the buying spree was a little too aggressive when money was cheap? Or do you think it was the right move to go doing what they did? What years were that? I, they're, they're not in the same time. The timeline of when he bought all the different companies was, is, is a... It, was I mean, like it took him, years, I it say, took him yeah. years to buy Steve Jobs' company. It took yeah. him years to go through, you know. So it was a lot the of... The relationship negotiation. with him and Steve Jobs, very interesting. It's a good relationship. Like yeah. Because because originally Jobs was hated Disney. Mm-hmm. And then he was very upset at the way that he, Disney treated him. The guy that was before... Uh, uh, Bob Iger, and he says, I just didn't like the way he was treated. Then Bob came in and says, would you mind having a meeting? No. And then finally he was open to the idea. Then they had the conversation, and eventually when he sat down negotiating with Jobs, he kind of got the feel that he was ready, and then Jobs called him back, and then boom, a deal was struck. And by the way, when Jobs passed away, a lot of people thought his money was made from Apple. Yeah, He was the biggest shareholder of Disney, oh, not wow. Apple. He was the biggest single, biggest shareholder in Disney, uh, not Apple. So for him, it was a lot of his net worth was increasing because of Disney. But he, here's a question for you. You said something subtly, Tom. You said Florida taxes, Florida taxes, right? 
DeSantis vows to have Disney pay its fair share of taxes. There's a new sheriff in town. This is a Fox Tampa Bay story, right? Yes. There's a new sheriff in town, declared Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, during a press conference in Ocala. That's just the way it's going to be. DeSantis proposed a bill that would keep a special taxing district in place, but give it a new name and create a five-person board appointed by the governor. He insisted that this would allow for closer monitoring of the district without requiring taxpayers to take on Disney's financial obligations. They're not going to have their own government here. Wow, what a thing for Disney to say. Disney is going to pay its fair share of taxes, and Disney is going to honor the debt. However, Florida Democrats argue that the bill is a political maneuver by DeSantis and does not address Disney's special perks or closer corporate tax. Loopholes DeSantis also uh, argues that closer oversight will give the state a more accurate picture of Disney's land value and service efficiency. So this is a question for, for you, Tom, and then I'll open it up. You guys can banter. What is the likelihood? What's the likelihood that Bob Iker and DeSantis have had a private meeting already? Oh, very likely. 100%. So, yeah. 100%. For okay. Sure. And who's making the requests? Who's making the demands? There's a big difference between requests and demands. Who's making requests? Who's making demands? I think Iger's making requests. Yeah. DeSantis is making demands. I agree. DeSantis is saying, you got to pay your yeah. property taxes, and I demand you do it. <sighs> Iger is saying, hey, look, this goes way back to Disney building all these jobs and bringing all this tourism. Every time you, you pay a little tax on a hotel room in Florida because you went to Disney theme park, Disney doesn't get that. Florida gets that tax. So Iger's like, look at this economy that we've made you know, for you in Florida, giving you all this tax, people buying food and coming to visit Disney. We get the ticket to the theme park. You get the tax on food, lodging, car rental, all the things that they do. Come on, dude, please. So he's making the request, and DeSantis is saying, listen, I don't want this woke stuff. I'm going to tear this thing up, and you're going to pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. I demand it. Who wins? I think in the end, if you put this to the voters, Disney, if you put it only to the <clears throat> Florida voters, I don't think this is a winning argument for Disney. But, but here's my question, though. Him, him saying something like, you know, less less of the woke stuff, do you think Ron and Florida is so big and powerful for that, like, especially the tax thing, that Disney's going to change their entire woke agenda to try to, you know what I mean, get into Florida? Because I, I just saw a, a cartoon that they put on Disney uh, Plus. Pat, I don't know if you guys saw that. It was, a, it was like, it was a really, really racial type of, like, do you think they're gonna? They're, do you think that they'll change because of something like that? This isn't about woke anymore. This it's, is. It's past by the, woke. By the way, Biden is arguing and and helping DeSantis every time he goes out. Tax the billionaires, make them pay their fair share. Those kind of voices coming from Washington mm -hmm. actually help DeSantis because the average voter in Florida says, "Hey, you're right. Maybe a long time ago Disney got a tax break, but why aren't they paying their fair share of property taxes and things today?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll kind of allow you to really elaborate on the tax stuff. Here's where I want to go with this, though. You know, a wise man once told me, choose your enemies wisely. Okay? It's a great Those, title for I a book. I think it's a great title for a book, for so be careful. Uh, look out yeah. for that coming soon. And I think Ron is pretty calculated. And, I, again, I'm not getting into the tax stuff. I'm talking more culture wars and choosing your enemy wisely. And Ron, when he won re-election, gave an entire speech. And, like, the, the mic drop moment was he says, Florida is where woke goes to, to die. die and essentially he knows exactly what he's doing he's sort of using disney as the poster boy or the whipping boy for the woke agenda especially in florida and ron said okay how can i pinpoint business florida woke agenda what company should i pinpoint this is pre-bob Iger. bob Iger has been ceo again now what three months six months max mm -hmm. And he said, this is where I want to pinpoint my agenda. This is exactly the type of company, exactly the type of woke agenda that I'm going to go after. And it's working for him. I just don't know if at, a, at some point this is going to backfire. I don't know. But for right now, it's definitely working for yeah, him. Yeah, so DeSantis said uh, back in November 30th when him and Bob Iger had a feud, mm -hmm. he said, uh, we didn't drag them in. They went in on their own and not only opposed the bill, threatened to get it re repealed. They brought this on themselves. I don't care what a Burbank, California-based company says about our laws. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Go ahead. You were going to say No, something. I was just going to say, I vividly remember, this is probably yeah. two years ago, you did an entire how-to on the difference between Florida Disney versus California Disney. Difference. And everything wow. that was happening in Florida and free state of Florida, DeSantis, 
and versus what was going on in California lockdown. Gavin Newsom. There were some stark differences. But I'm gonna, but I'm going to tell you this. Here, here's what I'm going to tell you. Obviously, we all know who DeSantis is. You know, from from the perspective of he's tough, he's strong, he's a leader. He's not going to compromise. You know, he, he comes across as an extremely valued based guy. All of this stuff. He's the type of guy. That if you're in war, he would be the guy that would be calling shots, leading. You visualize him as that leader. Mm-hmm. Doesn't fear. He's, he'll stand up against anybody, right? But Bob, here's Bob Iger. From my POV of what Bob Iger is, point of view, I see Bob Iger being the Kissinger personality that's willing to sit with anybody and negotiate talking to enemies and getting the enemy to be calm to speak with them in a reasonable manner without offending them. That's mm-hmm. what I see Bob Iger, which means to me, I, I think this would be pay-per-view type of conversations if it was public talk that you can see DeSantis and Iger having an hour, two-hour meeting. I think it's uh, you know great for television. You know, It would be great television uh, uh, to see those two go at it because it's two different styles of getting things done, mm-hmm. okay? and they're both very, very effective. DeSantis is set with heavyweights, but Bob Iger is also set with some real, real heavyweights oh, yeah. over the years. So one is free. Business mar- and political. Exactly. You got the free market heavyweights. You got the other side, which is political heavyweights. So yeah. anyways, we're going to see what's going to happen here. But that's Disney layoffs. There's more to it layoffs. You got Yahoo announcing the fact that they're laying off 20% of their staff by the end of the year, beginning this week. This is also CNBC story. Yahoo will lay off more than 20% of its work, workforce by the end of 2023, eliminating 1,000 positions alone one, this week alone. Wow. Private equity firm Apollo Global Management acquired 90% of Yahoo from Verizon in September 2020 when the company had about 10,000 employees at the time. Axios reported that more than 1,600 workers will lose their jobs in the latest cuts, suggesting the company's current headcount is closer to 8,000 employees. The layoffs are part of broader effort by the company to streamline operations in Yahoo's advertising unit to Yahoo for business. Business segment strategy has struggled to live up to the high standards across the entire stack. According to Yahoo spokesman, given the new focus of the Yahoo, new Yahoo advertising company, we will reduce the workforce of the former Yahoo for business division by nearly 50% by the end of 2023. So here's the thing. How much of this, Tom, okay, with Yahoo and with Disney and with Microsoft, not Microsoft, with Apple and, Amazon, and with Amazon and, and with, you know, all everybody. these. Guys. How much of it is layoffs because of interest rates, inflation, economy, and how much of it is because Disney royally screwed up because Yahoo is on its way down. It's been going down for a while, whether it's a good economy or a bad economy. Yahoo had a shot 15 years ago to dominate the marketplace. They missed their mark. Yahoo could have bought Twitter for $6 billion. They, Yahoo's made so many bad decisions over the last few years. They're a perfect book for a case study. Any <laughs> regular professor from any business school can do a case study on Yahoo of 55 things not to do. They're a picture-perfect uh, story for that company. But how much of this is bad mistakes? How much of it is it's a bad economy? People are tightening up. Uh, I think this is 80% economy and then 20% we're getting a window into what's happened at companies. Remember... When the economy goes down and the layoffs start happening, for those of you listening and you you sit there, I see layoffs all the time. Have you ever had a situation where you were cleaning out your closet, you're going to give a few things maybe to Goodwill, Salvation Army, and all of a sudden you clean a bunch more stuff out of your closet and you really organize it and you drop some things off for charity and you feel pretty good about it. Whenever the economy goes down, corporations have the same opportunity to kind of clean out part of the garage. So while the news is bad, make all of your moves. You follow that? When the news gets bad, don't just lay off people. If you've always, hey, well, you know, you got a couple projects here we'd like to write off. We had a couple things we're not sure about. Clean out the garage. This is 80% economy affecting and 20% people are cleaning out the garage. Like right now, Yahoo's taking the opportunity. If Yahoo was still public, their ticker system would be WLY, what's left of Yahoo. They are just a shell of themselves. Private equity bought it to squeeze out what's left of the advertising money that comes out of Yahoo, and they're making a buck on that, but it's a shell of itself, and they're using the opportunity to cancel some things and do this in line with everything else. So this is 80% the economy and 20% uh, bad decisions, and you know uh, Google saying, oh, we hired too fast, so now we have to trim it back. That's what they said last week. That's a form of cleaning out the closet. And then take a look at this. Remember when everybody said, oh, this is just a tech thing. This is just tech layoffs. Yeah. 
Remember that? Yep. The number of companies that have made layoff announcements is now slightly more than 200. Holy. 200. Tech companies? Or no, no, no. Companies that have period. announced layoffs. Overall. And that's like more than 100 layoffs. There's been... Now, the tech companies are leading with Wait, the Wait, 200 companies that have, that have laid off more than... A, companies that have laid off more than 100 people... Or more is two hundred of them right now. Correct. That's, 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 a, that's a real number. Now, uh, these are these well, are who knows? 500? But what he's saying is companies oh. that have laid off more than hundred people. That's gotcha, the number. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, you gotcha. see, and now the headlines are coming out of eight, seven thousand from Dinsey, fifteen thousand from Google. Those are big numbers. I mean, that's like, you know, when you take fifteen thousand, that's like laying off a university. There's universities, mm, yeah, thirty, forty thousand people. Let, let me ask you, uh, Pat, you, you mentioned that Google. Uh, Yahoo had an opportunity to buy Google. Is that what you said? Yahoo had an opportunity right. to buy. Yeah, Yahoo's had an opportunity to buy everybody. What, what year was that? Do you recall? I don't know. For I know they had a chance at buying uh, uh, a Twitter for six billion. But Google's story is a different story. You can see it right there. In 1990, Larry Page and Sergey yeah. Brin, founders of Google, expect uh, approach Yahoo to sell Google for one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! No, it's true, and they went one back. million dollars for Google. Yahoo! Refused. I would buy Google right, right. now for all the money I have. <laughs> I don't even have that much. Well, yeah. I, yeah. What I today? They're it. worth one point two four trillion dollars. Yeah, Is that, that a real number? That's only a trillion dollar <laughs> mistake. So wh why do I bring this up? <laughs> Like that space, it's crazy. Hilarious. It's crazy. So I wow. like. Let me take you back in time. We all remember it was around 2000, dude. I remember in the late 90s, <sighs> literally asking my buddy who was like a tech nerd at the time. I go, yeah. Hey, uh, Jeremy, what's the difference between uh, the internet and email? He's like, Oh, you nerd, dude. You're talking about the late 90s, midnight. Nobody knew. Like we 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 think about oh the tech and social media and big tech it's like you're a, you're aging yourself bro hundred percent you, you, you keep you have to stay thirty nine first, the, first the donut now I, this I, I full on admit that I was alive in the late nineties I was I don't know despite contrary belief uh, not a vampire we were just selling but, that it was your thirty ninth birthday and then you go say this third, yeah thanks a lot third time but I just I, I'm I'm using this as an example of how. Yahoo was like a leader or a thought leader, a business leader at the time, and now they're sort of like a joke. I mean, they, they lost out a trillion yeah. dollar. I remember at the time going to search information on the internet, mm -hmm. and I went on to yahoo.com. Yep. This is in the early 2000s. And I remember a friend of mine goes, Yahoo, use Google. I said, Google? Yeah. It's I'm a, a Yahoo guy. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy goes, what, what, Google. And I go, have fun with your Google, buddy. <laughs> I'm a Yahoo guy. Yeah. Talk about getting it wrong. Yeah. And I remember these conversations because right now it's like, just Google it. Google it. Mm -hmm. How often do we say just Bing it? Just duck, duck, go it. Just yeah. Yahoo it. Yeah. It's not a thing. It's Google. Just Google it. Yeah. Use the Google machine. But just to let you know how the mighty have fallen, Yahoo was the company in the uh, early Yahoo. 2000s. It was, it, was all, it was all Yahoo. But, well, uh, uh, Pat, how, how, much, how much percentage of all those, Tom, do you guys think? Remember we talked about the last podcast, Amazon, all these, they're all mm -hmm. laying off. How much does that have to do with AI? And now the AI is taking some of these jobs that these people are doing. Not, it's not as... It's not significant right now, but I mean, it has to do maybe some of it. I don't, you, I don't know. Don't think I don't, so, I don't, by the way, let me just give you what Kathy Wood said. Here's what Go Kathy ahead. Wood said. She says, "Arc in Invest CEO uh, Kathy Wood explains the real reason behind the tech layoffs. This is her argument. According to Stock Picker and Arc Invest CEO Kathy Wood, technology companies are cutting jobs as they harness the new AI tools." and other technologies to increase productivity and provide new products and services, Wood states stated that these layoffs should not be viewed as a sign of technology sector being in disarray, but instead as a correction from overhiring during the height of the pandemic. More than 300 technology firms, including Amazon, Apple, uh, Zoom, Dell, and IBM, have seen layoffs in 2023, nearly 100,000 job cuts since the beginning of the year. The beginning of the year was just six weeks ago. Just, <laughs> Five weeks ago. It's not like the beginning of the year. Yeah. According to what AI is playing a role in the layoffs. Uh, as it provides new avenues for amplifying productivity, Wood even predicted that by 2030, Amazon will have more robotic employees than humans. So, Vinny, our AI expert, what do you think is causing... <laughs> Please, because you're right. So tell us what AI is was doing. Was I right? Yes. I mean, AI, do, do, just, just think about it, because uh, so who was talking about it yesterday? I think it was on, on Joe Rogan's podcast, that the new update, the part four of the chat GBT is coming out. The way that they were talking with Lex Friedman, it's scary that in the next 10 15 years they're literally going to take over and so it's going to ruin uh society because everybody's going to be unemployed people are going to have the jobs and then pat, I, I don't know about that i'm just 
That's what that could well think about it, Pat. I think it has to do with lava. If right now you have somebody writing a story that I could easily just type in chat G, uh, GBT and then just tweak it a little bit, why do we need that human being doing it? You yeah, know what I mean? So, so you're, you're right. I think the, the thing to uh, uh, put there is the, the reaction. So, for example, uh, we can come up with content here. Mm -hmm. We can get ChatGBT to give us a script on what to put up there for, what do you call it? Uh, uh, you know, how to respond to this. If mm -hmm. somebody says this, how do you respond to that? And how do you respond to that? Okay, great. You can put that on there. There's no problems with that. We are enamored by human beings who independently can do things that others cannot do. We're enamored by that. Hollywood acting, if you can act a role and get me to believe in the movie Fences, when you watch Denzel, you don't love me. I don't love you. Yeah. You, Hey, you have the other. You, you see that. And, but you've seen five other people do that part. That was done years ago by the famous legendary actor who passed away. You know, you're like, oh, my God, what, a, what a great. You see Leo when he does the bear on top of him before the 19 oh year old girl. This bear was on top of that one yeah. movie. What is the movie's name? Um, a, a coven, uh, uh, what is the name of the movie? With the bear, you, you know what well, I'm talking about? With the, what's his name? With Tom Hardy. When he lives in the, the middle yeah. of the Oh, he, he cut the real horse. Sick, oh, sick yeah. what he does. And Covenant of it? I don't know. Yeah, what's the name then, of no, it? He won the, the Oscar. Revenant. Revenant. Covenant. Yeah. Yeah. The hell's but, like by the way, you hear Tony Robbins speak and he's like moving an audience and he's, you know, or you hear Antonio Robbins. Antonio Robbins. No, not Antonio Robbins. Listen, forgive me for, you know, that's a whole different story. I don't want. Oh, right by the way, you watch you AI watch expert. Steve Harvey tell a story. Have you seen Steve Harvey tell He's a story? Freaking moving. I gotta tell you, Steve Harvey is maybe one of the top ten best storytellers in the world today. Yep. When he tells a story, you could find yourself seven minutes later saying, "What the hell did I do just the last seven minutes?" <laughs> yeah. You so ChatGBT cannot do that because you don't see the emotion mm -hmm. behind the machine. We are not turned on by machines. Mm -hmm. Have you ever physically been turned on by a machine and say, man, I'm emotionally attached to this? This doesn't mean there's an entire billion Don't dollar industry that, with toys. I was just going to say, Rob, that, yeah. Rob showed because me a video once. <laughs> Rob showed me a video and I was like, "Are they on sale?" Yeah, but, and Tom but, knows the economy's taking a yeah. pounding these days. So <laughs> yeah. look, the, the fear the fear with technology has been around for mm. a long time. Yeah, and 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 the one thing with us as we age, Vinny. Yeah, and we start worrying about uh, end of the world, and you know, and you start talking about these kids are lazy and they don't know. When you start making comments like that, that's the first sign of you getting old. I'm getting old, hundred percent. But here's my thing, though, Pat. I'm talking about. 20 years from now, because mind you, we're not in the beginning stages. It's, this thing is getting smarter, yeah. smarter, smarter. Yeah. Pat, the robot, you know, I saw in China, they have rope. They, they had, dude, I saw a fleet of these Chinese robots. And it's, I, oh, I went to a restaurant with Kelly a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I'm not joking. They had like one or two servers. We ordered the food. A, a robot came out with everything, gave us our food, gave me my drink. And I was like, can I get a refill? Yes. The thing left, brought me my, I'm what? not. Was, I'm, was this robot hot? I'm gonna tell you something right now. What was I, her name? Did you get her number? Uh, I don't know. The, <laughs> I don't know the name of it. But bro, I, I looked at Kelly, and Kelly's eating. She's not even paying attention. She's like, I told you, there's what fucking the robots restaurant? here. It's like it was like a Korean, one of the Korean hot pot. Of course, buffet. Korean. I mean, they're Hello? advanced, no, no, bro. No, no, no. But, just, but Pat, it's what a little, it's a little cart. You know that you know Roomba that runs around your. your I, have house I have one. I have one. I have a relationship with them. I'm single, but picture I a Roomba that kind of has a little radar in it, so it doesn't yeah. run into furniture. It just kind of goes yeah. around with a with a big post on it and a platter on top and you're yeah. they put your food on it no but but, Pat, so, but tom when it dropped off my food it kind of looked back to me and it went <laughs> like it made like a noise <laughs> that robot was into me well, it, I, right. I think i think pat is basically so saying it went when you get a diet coke <laughs> refill <laughs> yeah I, I think pat is saying that certain elements of humanity cannot be replaced so for instance I agree. you know we went to lunch a few weeks ago at a restaurant called hooters yeah shout out to our friends at hooters hi girls i don't think there's ever going to come a time that ai and robots are going to make it called rooters okay like the robots aren't taking over hooters are you sure well, hold I'm on pretty positive do you remember your that? yahoo yeah. your yahoo google situation i'm telling right now that. you're going to be an old man you're going to go <laughs> i remember the podcast i'm telling you right now <laughs> it's not going to happen soon but i'm saying it's happening because i think some of these jobs are going do you think do you think so okay so let's, let's play ahead. this because i think there's there is fetishes like I had, I had a. I, when you're in the army, you learn about a lot of weird things with yeah, okay. people with fetishes. Yeah. Because okay. when you're doing late night guard duty, of course, yeah. I've done that before. Trust me. <laughs> you're like, oh, what yeah. are you doing, bro? Yeah. Hey, man, dog, it's my fetish. You know, no, can man. we keep this between? I'm like, yeah. dude, at least you know, <laughs> dude. Anyways, All I'm right. not going to get into yeah. specifics. Yeah, but but, but but here's a part. Here's a part. 
Fetishes, fine. But I want I want to ask you this question. Go let's ahead. let's say thirty years from now. Okay. You're 69 years old, 30 years from now. However, would you, you're going to be 70. You're going to be 70. 70 years okay. old. Okay, 30 years, 30 years from now, you're going to be 70, okay? You're at a restaurant. Relax. 75. <laughs> Fuck, 74. Shut like We're doing like particulars. Yeah. Not, Tom, so, don't run the so numbers. You go, you go to a restaurant <laughs> 70 years from now. You go to, 30 years from now, you go to a restaurant, okay? And at this point, this restaurant is known for having the hottest Robots in the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. By the way, technology is so advanced mm -hmm. that they are 100% scored in a way where what men think is beautiful, they look just like that. Their skin feels like regular skin. They have every feature yeah. a woman has. Yes. She comes and serves you food. Mm -hmm. Okay? You... <laughs> Flirt with her. Yeah, I know I am. Would I'm you, old. Would you hook up with a robot? One hundred percent. One hundred. Am I going to get a virus? I'm not going to. But nothing. they're going to have a feature, though. What? If they don't like you, that robot can cut it as well. If she doesn't like, like, like it, bob it. <laughs> oh. It's going to be like, uh oh, boom! One time you go in, <laughs> boom. That at that age, um, that thing isn't even. Gonna be working. Well, no, with the way technology is, yeah, your thing is going to be working be, yeah. when you're dead. Well, with so, the reverse yeah. aging pill, I might be. But I, listen, in thirty years, can you even imagine how hot? Like I'm not gonna lie, I are saw. You, are you gonna care? Like, are you? Would you hook up with a robot? I 100 percent. Pat, with some of the videos that I've seen, yeah, 100 percent. Vinny, what? you would hook up with a robot. Yes, I would. And uh, 30 yeah. years from now, in 30 years, I'm telling you guys, your Yahoo, Google, you're gonna change your tune. Yeah, wait I don't till know. you see in 30 uh, years what these robots are listen, gonna look like. You know. Consider me old school. I just yeah. kind of like hooking up with regular human women. You're uh, saying that. Yeah. You're saying that in 2020. <laughs> I'm old school like you're that. You're saying in 2023. In 2060. Yeah. Trust me, your tune is gonna change, bro. Uh, so you're, that's it. You're you're leading the low br the robot uh, brigade of uh, marketing to, uh, to start banging robots. I'm gonna be. A, I'm not saying bang robots. I'm saying I'm gonna be an old man by then. But what I'm telling you is the technology is gonna be ridiculous because they're gonna look yeah. spectacular. I saw what I, I was doing something on the podcast which was gonna be funny. I saw one of those ones that just sits on your couch. It looked ridiculous. The it was it wasn't like robotic. Just wait thirty years. You see what's gonna happen. I see your face. You're you're like wait. What's oh, you'll see. Goodness. I'll show you one. Have you seen that one where uh, half her head's listen, missing? And she's like, how, how did we get here? We were talking about. <laughs> I'd love like, to get a poll no, he going asked on. The question, <laughs> he asked the question. He says, how much of this is AI? I said, here's what Kathy Wood said about it. Then I said, here's mm -hmm. our AI expert, Vinny. And then he went talking about uh, robot porn. And then boom, we're, <laughs> now we're here. Later that can, same can day. Can I make one point about our friend? Where, can I bring it back to the point? Yeah. yeah. I think, I think you know, we, we tend to forget we just went through a worldwide pandemic yep. for two years where it was like, what goes up must come down. Money printing, inflation, insanity, lockdown, supply chain. We like, th th this was the the global economy stopped mm -hmm. for a full on year, especially depending on where you were in the world. And things are kind of restarting again. And Kathy said, everyone thinks the technology sector is in disarray, but here it is. Instead, this is just a correction from over hiring during the height of the pandemic. Kathy Wood, I never heard her name prior to two thousand. Mm -hmm. She was one of the darling investors of covid okay does it i'm gonna ask you Vinny. does the name eric juan ring a bell eric zoom juan. no okay he's the ceo founder of zoom oh. he went from a relatively unknown man to arguably the most needed famous man in the world at one point because yeah. he's the founder of zoom mm -hmm. now zoom it's like yeah, ah, it's like yeah, zoom a little bit FaceTime, we're yeah. back in we're back in human interaction now mm -hmm. Right? What does Lincoln say? Uh, circulate amongst the troops. Touch. Yeah. yeah. So I think we're we're going this correction. I'm talking about is that we've gone from like completely relying on technology for two years mm -hmm. to like, all right, let's just get back to so normal. Mm -hmm. And essentially, a lot of these layoffs Let are because this. of that. Tom, what, what what do you think about this whole conversation about relationships with robots? I'm actually I want to ask it in a most serious way possible. You your dad was a rocket scientist. You're a guy that went through <laughs> IBM's training. You're a guy that was a professor at Biola, adjunct professor at Pepperdine. You've been all over the place. You've been in technology. You've been in IT. You've been studying, following this industry for a while, so you know the good, bad, and the ugly. Do you think it'll come to a point where people will be dating robots and they're going to be replacing relationships, all that stuff? Well, I have two very distinct thoughts yeah. on this. The first is... Um, don't worry about the robots. It's just jobs are going to be different, and people are going to do different jobs. It's like when the when the saddle tanner, a tanner is a guy that uh, works with leather, mm -hmm. and when the saddle tanner saw the first car, 
he's like, oh, man, my, my saddle business is screwed if this catches on, mm -hmm. right? Because he's making saddles for horses and all that kind of stuff. And these waves go through the economy and technology and advancement happen. The jobs are different, point one. Point two, if you go look back at the dawn of the last, like, five technology cycles, the Internet, DVDs, by the way, um, you know what drove D you, you know what um, drove multi-perspective DVDs? Remember, mm. you could watch a movie and change mm. the perspective on mm. it. Porn, porn, and CES, Consumer Electronics Show, tried to keep it off to the side. Porn was took full advantage of VHS. They took full advantage of DVD. P porn, talk about the internet and and what happened there. There's always been an element where people use technology to fulfill vices. So that I think. That's going to happen with robots, and I think it's bad okay, for cool. relationships. And, 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 I think it's bad for the human relationship, but we've seen it happen before with technology. And, and Pat, think about this. We're, we're kind of joking around. I'm joking about it, but I, you know, are I'm gonna, you? Though, no, I, Benny? I, 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 dude, I'm a freaking comedian. But what I'm saying is, Pat, think about this. It's people like us. Obviously, we wouldn't. You guys, you know, girlfriends, married, whatever, whatever. I'm not talking about the average guy that just watches porn on their phone and we're not paying for it. It's the guy that. You know, like they get the subscription. Yeah. They're watching it. They're alone. Trust me, those guys. You give them the opportunity of a robot that's in the house that they could hook up with. Mm -hmm. And dude, what was that movie, Joaquin Phoenix? Uh, do you guys? Um, it was just her. Her. It was um, Scarlett Johansson was just a robot in his ear, and he was had a relationship, bro. Wait till that becomes the darkest, a, most annoying movie. I've annoying watched. movie, Pat. But look at how it was horrible. It's it was one just of the him. top ten worst movies I've seen, and I love Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, he's one of my favorites. But and Pat, think about how cheap uh, that movie was movie. to make. Just just her voice yeah. in his head that said, walking around in the office, he was a, they made like Hallmark cards. We should make a, a, a version of that yeah. from like a low budget and but we should call it him. Uh, he, him. <laughs> <laughs> Too different. It's just like, don't do it. And it's you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my in God. In a room. That's so freaking. Hey, Johnny. Yeah. Hey, jo what? <laughs> what? I just, I can't. I'm trying to have a relationship with my ex. You, I don't know. By the way, the you, more I think about it, the, here's, here's what you're making me think about. So, God. okay. So porn was what? VHS. Yes. I'm trying to buy, buy the original movie cover sealed of Rocky One and all in this one auction and uh, uh, Godfather. But the first one was VHS. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then from VHS, it was DVD, DVD. right? Yeah. And then from DVD, Blue so Ray porn or... VHS, you know, in the Army barracks, this guy had like a thousand porn VHSs on top of each other. And we said, this one's the best one. This one's this. So then you go DVD. Then you're saving files on a computer. Yes. Then it went Napster. Then it's Phone Easy. What is the the main site? It's called uh, whatever the new porn sites are. There's a couple of uh, big ones. And then from there you're gonna go virtual reality. What they're is doing after that. virtual vir vir yeah. virtual realities? Yeah. They're doing that. So maybe the next phase after virtual reality is gonna be where. Some guy's going to have a robot. I'm going to take a lunch break. He goes on his lunch break. Why, why is your truck going up and down? Because, well, it's, <laughs> Yo, being, it's her. Uh, it's her. My V2 2200. <laughs> it's a you know 2029 model I just bought for 17 grand. What are yeah. you doing, like, how, emotionally attract, uh, how emotionally attached are you and if it's a robot? I'm like, hey, Patton, listen, I know you've had a rough yeah. week. Go on my truck. Just make sure you're not too to crazy. That in guy's to, to, but like, like, here's the question, though. Go ahead. If... If will the optics change? If you know how right now, if somebody says something about his girl, he's gonna it's, get upset. Forget it. But then maybe it's okay. It's a robot. I don't give. If yeah. you say yeah. your robot is a piece of that's and guess what? That's fun. she's a, she's a whore. Okay. <laughs> are whatever. you gonna are you gonna be offended by? Hell it? Probably no. Probably not. No. Hell no. I don't know, man. But, I'm uh, concerned about this direction we're going. With I did, this, and but. the pen. I saw a video. I saw a video <laughs> where the guys and and this was I was somewhere in Asia. They were in the virtual stuff. People are sitting there watching, and the, the, the guy's humping this machine that's set up as a I swear to God as a female, but he's seeing a really hot person. You're kidding me. I swear to God. What what kind of porn do you watch? I wasn't porn. It was on Duck Duck Go. Duck Duck Go it, bro. Oh yeah. I'm just saying. Duck, just it. mark my words. I'll probably be dead by then. Oh, You'll see God. what's gonna happen. Okay. Watch how this technology right, changes. Let's, let's <laughs> transition out of this story. And nobody uh, mentioned all, about Tom. No shout out to Ashod. Shout out to Scott Rodriguez. Seven months insider. He's gonna be with us on February 23rd. Looking forward to seeing all the nice. guys that are coming to the 500,000 subscriber on February 23rd. Thank you, thank you. It, What's the status uh, of that? Panel. Like tickets, what do we got? It's, it's sold out. It's sold out within the first few that hours. That so here, it'll be here at the uh, new... Okay. Yesterday I'm at the building and I'm seeing the cigar lounge being built with the... Oh my yeah. God, it's awesome. 
It's awesome. Can't wait for that thing to be done mm -hmm. and uh, what we'll do with that here in Fort Lauderdale. But Speaking of, of movies, annoying movies, we're talking about this movie. I watched a movie this past week. Here we go. You didn't like it at all? Here we go. I watched a movie called... The Judge. The Judge. Yeah. What an annoying movie. Why? In, in the nicest possible way. I mean, you're... you're, 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 you're <laughs> Were you? Yeah, I you're bet. Quite, it's, it's, I it's, bet. It, yeah, I, that, I, I want to know why you were so adamant that we needed to watch that movie. There's so many different elements. It's literally the exact opposite relationship you have with your father. That was like what I was thinking the whole time. I'm like, why is Pat wanting yeah. me to watch this, us but, to watch this movie? Because, because you know, to some it's a father, to some it's a mother, mm -hmm. to some it's a, another relationship, to some it's an uncle, to some it's a grandfather. But no matter what it is. People grew up mostly, most people grew up with a complicated relationship with somebody they loved mm -hmm. that nobody knows about. Yeah. It's you and them, okay? And that movie to me, The Judge, the relationship with the father, watching that guy. First of all, I thought of, I've thought about a lot of people and I recommend that. I thought about you because you kind of remind me of the actor on how he plays. That's kind of like you know, how you are. And to see that setting, how they're avoiding each other and it's like, hey, hey, and you, and then... At one point when you actually want to tell your dad what you want to tell him and then he tells you what he tells you that's so painful that you want to kill the guy mm -hmm. when he says those comments. And then the the siblings are just trying to bring everybody together and unify. But it's a it's a real movie. It 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 depicts so many different things that people are actually going through. I thought yeah. the judge was an incredible movie. And then the end, how the judge ends up being judged and oh, such a great movie. And then he uses that opportunity to say, I remember us going fishing together when we were a kid. Yeah. yeah. I remember, and you're like, fuck. Yeah. And then how he dies and just oh, the crazy. Yeah, I don't want to give away the ending, yeah. but the, the, <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the relationship with, with the father and the son is very emblematic to what I was dealing with. Yeah. My dad, mm -hmm. my dad wasn't a judge <laughs> and I wasn't an attorney, but that, just that, that love, hate, respect. All I want to do is earn your respect. I love you, but I hate you. And the, there's so many emotions. Uh, the, to me, the like the, the 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 thing that I remember the most is when he, you know, he's like, I, 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 "Do you want me to defend you in in Science, court?" Yeah, like he was a judge who basically was um, uh, allegedly murdered somebody in a car, yeah. uh, ran someone yeah. over, and then he became uh, on trial, even though he's a judge. Whole complicated story. He goes, "Do you want me to defend you?" Because Robert Downey Jr. was the I think top hot attorney, shot, hot shot attorney know, some big some other state, yeah. Big city had to go back to some small town, podunk town in, in Indianapolis mm -hmm. or in Indiana. And um, you know, he, he dropped like a little one page contract. He wrote yes because he oh, couldn't no. say it to him. Yeah, Just exactly. He checked yes. Yeah. But at the end, he goes, You know, I you know, when you asked me who the, the best attorney ever was and I told you someone else, he goes, I just want to let you know that it'd be you. Wow! It was like, yeah. dang, Bro. and that's all the son wanted to hear. That's right. Like, I'm proud of you. That's yeah. right. He's like, I went to this school. I went to Northwestern. Yeah. I went. I did all this, and you didn't even say great job. Nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah. all I want to do is seek your validation. I became an attorney. You're a judge. All that. And he goes, yeah. And then he died right there on the boat. Oh my god! With him, and he just. Said, How much did you cry? Be honest. I didn't cry. Like you were emotional. You're getting emotional you're, right now no, talking I'm just, about it. But you're it's holding so, it. I, th I think you're absolutely right. I think it's wh whether whether it's you and maybe your mom, or yeah. maybe me and my dad. Me and my dad, Whatever sure. relationship yeah. you have, there's someone. Yeah. You're like, why don't you just get, come on. <laughs> and to see it come full circle. And then and then on the, I don't want to give it away, but when, well, I guess I'm giving it away. I mean, it's an old movie. He dies on the boat. Yeah. And he doesn't even try to like no, he just, do nothing. He yeah. just, because he was in jail and he's like, I know because I think he was like in a leave of absence, good behavior. Yeah. And he didn't even try to save his life. He's like, I want him to die here outside on the boat, yeah. not back inside on just <laughs> yeah. so powerful. And when yeah. cancer in the in the bathtub. Oh, oh just, my god, that bathtub. And, and the daughters, can I come in? No, don't come in. Yeah. It's just and mind you, it's a, it's a tear jerk. It's a tear jerk. Sure. And when you're like somebody like me, because comedians, you know, we're really messed up people because we have all the problems. That's what's yeah. the funny thing about us. When a serious moment happens like that and I feel myself like I'm about to cry, mm -hmm. I automatically have to go to comedy. In my mind, I was like, oh shit, like in that moment, I'd be like, I didn't do it. Because they have a shitty relationship. I'm like, because yeah. now you're going to bring that body back to shore and be like, listen, I know we hate each other, but this was not me. But thank you for being vulnerable for a second because, you know, the whole time I'm thinking, why is Pat recommending this movie? He has got a great relationship with your father. Mm -hmm. Like, you're the type of, you have the type of relationship with your father any son and father would want, genuinely. 
but maybe, like you said, maybe it's not your father. Maybe yeah. it's your mother. Maybe it's a sibling. Yeah. Maybe it's everyone has those complicated yeah. relationships. Yeah. With, where with all puppy you love. want to hear is the person you love say, "Hey, great job." Yeah, big Something time. Something simple. Yep. And the fact that your father can't even say that, yeah. your son can't say that, their mother say that, "Hey, I'm proud of you." Yep. That's all some people want to hear. Some great, great recommendation. So great, re great recommendation. Yeah. First of all, I mean, if you have never seen the movie The Judge, go watch The Judge. Yeah, go it's on. Watch it's on Hulu. It's on uh, Hulu, I think. Yeah, go, Prime. Go watch it and see what. I got it on YouTube. To you. It's on it's Hulu. A phenomenal, Hulu. phenomenal yeah. movie. Well, yeah, thank you, you for that. You did your homework, man. That's good stuff. You <laughs> You're back on the show. Only reason he's back, back on the show. Today, yeah, guys. yeah. yeah we need more movies yeah. about the human condition that takes relationships together, whether they're documentaries or things like this. These are these are movies we need because I I I'm long term. I worry about. You know, media and just the the numbing of everyone on CGI and Ant Man, Wasp three and, <laughs> and things. It's it's like I want my kids to have opportunities to see movies like this about the human condition because then we can talk about being a person. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't talk about being Ant Man at the end of it. Yeah. And that's what made um, the last Avengers so powerful when Robert Downey Jr. dies. Huh. Right. Remember how powerful that was? Oh my how God. Different it was. It was no longer an Avengers movie. It was a man at the end of his life who had achieved his quest. And the movies about the human condition like this, we need. Uh, and, and by the way, you know, maybe it's also because I'm a big fan of Robert Downey mm -hmm. Jr. Yeah. with his fall and his rise. And, you know, somebody said the other day, Here's uh, Robert Downey Jr. is a perfect example of somebody who went from being a, a boyfriend quality to a husband quality. Mm -hmm. You know, how he changed himself the way he did. It's a phenomenal story of what he's done to himself. Anyways, if you mm -hmm. haven't seen it, go watch it. Somebody just commented right now. Eight-month member Michael uh, Peterson. He said, grew up without a father. It was impactful to see how tough love works. Phenomenal movie. Carlos, thank you for the super chat. And I think uh, Michael also said something else. Somebody said, Adam, oh, Daniel... Good uh, uh, Godo, who's been a member now for eight months, uh, he said, Adam makes me nuts, but glad he's not gone yet. <laughs> <laughs> and Thank I said, you. Glad he's not gone. Thank you, Imagine. question mark. But yeah. you get, Adam, you're starting to grow on people, man. People yeah. are starting to like you right now. I don't know what's like going on. Like a barnacle. Okay, all right, so let's go on to this next story. Give here. it time. Ladies next and story. Next story. Andrew Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo blasts Biden over migrant crisis. Andrew Cuomo blasts Biden after, after migrant crisis. And Andrew's kind of been missing for a minute. He had lunch one time with Kellyanne Conway. Everybody talked about it. And now he is back. Andrew Cuomo, former New York governor, criticized President Biden open board and policy, calling it a mistake and unprepared. In the latest episode of his podcast, Matter of Fact, Cuomo stated, uh, it was a mistake for President Biden to open the border without having a plan to handle the tremendous flow of people. Cuomo also accused the Biden administration of not understanding the consequences of enacting their promises and said the southern states were right that opening the border created a tremendous hardship for them to handle. They were right that the federal government was not prepared. Cuomo also spoke on the uncontrolled flow of migrants and its impact, saying the border is not just a gateway for people, but for drugs. This is on top of a homeless problem that has already strained resources in urban areas. So, so Pat, here's, here's my, my one question. If it's not for, when we talked about this, especially when Roland was here too, if it's not for the votes, and we're not talking about these people, I'm talking about their kids, kids, kids down the line, they're gonna, all going to vote Democrat because I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to be the ones that say, listen, we had the border open, remember to vote for us. If it's not that, what is it? Because don't try to tell me that this administration cares about minorities. or They, they do not care. What is their actual motive if it isn't that, Pat, and if it's not the votes? Because it's not, oh, we love immigration. It's the Statue of Liberty is a symbol. and we are oh, No, no, it's not that. What is it? What, it what, if you had to guess not, it not being the votes, what else if you were a Democrat? What would, you, what would be your defense? It's, what? It's, first of all, it's optics. If, if you remember, do you remember the AOC picture at the border? Yeah, she's uh, like crying. Uh, can you go to the picture of AOC? Emotional. And emotional, crying, oh, it's, posting it. Was a, it, 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 that, it was a photo shoot. It was a photo That's op. That's a photo right? op, If you go time. and show the picture of her crying, yeah. you know, and uh -huh. what it looked like, and yeah. she's at the border, that, yeah. and that was to trash Trump. Of course. Okay? Has she been back there and taking similar pictures under these guys? No. Of course she's not. Okay? No. Mm -hmm. So this is called politics. This is the dirty side of politics. Some are better than others. She's one of the best. She's probably in the top ten best, you know, gamification, dirty politics, manipulation. She's one of the best. She she's wouldn't have 13 million followers on Twitter if she wasn't. Mm -hmm. Lover or hater, she plays. She's like Patrick Beverly. Mm -hmm. She's like Ron Artez. 
She's like these players that would know how to throw the elbow and piss you off. Chris Paul, how annoying of a point guard he is to get the foul and flop and all that stuff. That's the optics, okay? You either can do it or you cannot do it. She's one of them, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side with long-term voting, first of all, if you you leave the border open, who are they coming to see anyways? They're coming to see who? The, the, who, the, the, the people the, that are crossing the border, who are they coming to see? Other family members? Okay, so you're winning whose votes? Their kids and their kids. You're winning people's votes who are already living here, 100%. whose family's coming to them. Very true. So that is a vote that you want, mm-hmm. okay? So then the people that are coming in, who are you winning? Future voters is what you're saying. 100%. Okay, great. But it's such a major issue that if you don't go and talk about it, they, the media is not talking about it. The left doesn't have to talk about it. Mainstream media doesn't have to talk about it. However, the problem today is the following. The problem they're going to face today is the left itself is done with Kamala and with Biden. Mm-hmm. Did you see the story about what Hillary Clinton said about Kamala Harris two days ago? Did <laughs> no. you guys read that story no. or no? What you said? Have you seen this where it's circulating? Ever? So Hillary Clinton is on this tour going all these places in India. Uh, India's her new Haiti, by the way, just so you guys know. Oh, shit, really? The next target for her is Haiti. If oh, she man. got money from Haiti... The next target for her is India. If she targeted Haiti, remember how much money they got from Haiti and the money never ended up going to the actual people? Mm -hmm. Well, now she's targeting India next. She's been in India this past week going around, oh, my God, here's what's going on. Climate change is really hurting you. It's getting hotter. She's stuff, all these strange comments she's making. But this is what happened this week about her comments regarding Kamala Harris. Top Democrats are questioning Vice President Kamala Harris's leadership abilities and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton even reportedly has her doubts. Members of Congress, Democratic strategists, and other major party figures all said she, Harris, had not made herself into a formidable leader. Uh, Monday article from New York Times, by the way. So this is not New York Post. Okay, this is Times. Times, in an article, said member of Congress, Democratic strategists, and other major party figures like all said Harris had not made herself into a formidable leader. The piece said two Democrats recalled Clinton privately dismissing Harris' chances of clearing a presidential primary field because she lacked the necessary political instincts. Two Democrats recalled private conversations in which former Secretary of Hillary Clinton, state, of State Hillary Clinton, lamented that Mrs. Harris could not win because she did not have the political instincts to clear a primary field. A spokesperson for Clinton pointed to their strong bond, although the Times didn't quote him issuing a specific denial of Clinton's reported private thoughts. So there you have it. So this is kind of going on. So the border thing that you're talking about, if it keeps getting worse and worse. And it is. It looks like it is. And it is. 8,000 people a day or No problem. Like that. Then eventually, if people don't want Kamala and Biden to run again, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to talk about, but look at the border crisis. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's it media has a uh, 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 ace in there. Uh, 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 ace in the hole. Ace in the hole uh, sleeve to Don't say. Don't pinch the bear. Bro. Yeah. Don't pinch it. Bro, yeah. They have, an, they have an ace in their shorts to use <laughs> that in case something happens to say, bingo, yeah. go after, we need to get somebody else running. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I think you're absolutely right. There's things that are behind the scenes here. The first is Cuomo has been given the green light. Remember, who's the border girl? Come Our vice Harris. president. So the border czar. I mean. Yeah, yeah. The yeah she hasn't are. been there yet, right? I will eventually get there. Yeah. Um, the um, <laughs> so number one, he has a green light to do it. Number two, he is looking for a centrist position for his own person. You know, Cuomo's not done. He doesn't want to go to Palm Springs and retire. You know, Cuomo wants to be relevant, and he's he's got to reemerge and reinvent himself. So he's coming out with this very moderate, measured position mm-hmm. for himself. He's been given the green light to actually say something like this by the machine. And last week, ABC News is saying things like, you know, we just ran a poll here at ABC News. Uh, actually, one of four think they're worse off since the start of the Biden administration. I about fell off my chair when I saw that. So there's more things like that that are going on. Hillary's going out saying these things. They're all trying to do one thing and one thing only. I see the phrase clear a primary field. No, they're not trying to clear it. They're trying to build it and they're trying to build it without the current president in 24. Hmm. Wow. Speaking of Cuomo, are you um, predicting that Cuomo is going to kind of give a run in 2024? I, I don't think so. But do you think he wants to sit on the sideline and smeared with 
doing half as much as Bill Clinton ever did, and yet he has to sit on the sidelines as the as the you know hashtag Me Too governor that got blown out. He doesn't want that. He's not going to sit there. He's got too much pride and too much going there. His dad is he Mario wants to Cuomo. Reinvent himself, and he's coming out here yeah. with a very balanced. This is a very balanced, honest. Story. Well, well, I, yeah. I guess my question is: the Southern wh- states wh- were right, ladies. Other and than his own legacy, which is clearly tarnished at this point. Yeah. What do you think his motivation is? It, it, what is what is political instincts leading him towards? I think the machine is back there putting these out. But what is Cuomo's? Uh, He's asking you what's Andrew's yeah. uh, motive. I, I think it's Andrew. Here, here's a way to take a couple steps back. Here's something. Here's something to come out there and be, you know, man of the people. A couple steps back. What to, does he want to accomplish? Do? What though? Uh, the guy doesn't want to retire, and the guy's got aspirations. Is it going to aspirations lead to- of being? This is purely speculation. Does he want to be a pundit? Does he want to be involved in the DNC? Is he running for something now? Clearly, I, I he's would, not running for governor of New York again. Well, right? he loves being in front of the if camera. You, if you he offered him an That's opportunity true. to kind of make a comeback on MSNBC and be in front of the yeah. camera, he'd take it. If you offered him an opportunity to if, and then and then and have a platform mm-hmm. in the political stage with the DNC, I think he'd take it. He wants to be a deal maker. He wants to mm-hmm. be a king maker. He wants to be who he was as the governor of New York. And he doesn't want to go quietly into retirement. Who do you think has more political legs or uh, you know, a brighter future? Mar- uh, Andrew Cuomo, the former governor, or Chris Cuomo, the former CNN pundit? Well, Chris Cuomo became a media guy. Pure media game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Andrew, I think, still has legs. What do you think, Pat? I know you were big fans of them during the pandemic. I know we're Pat, talking about. Love I, I, listen, for me, obviously, you know, what what the whole cover up brother, all that stuff that, you know, Chris got criticism for, which it's his brother. What do you think he's going to do? He's going to sit there and uh, when he's praying at night and he's talking to his dad, you know, and his, obviously his dad's no longer here, but when he's talking to his dad, praying, whatever you're doing, and saying, hey, what should I do that? You back up your brother. What do you think Mario, his father, told Chris and Andrew when they were small saying, hey, you guys better back each other up till the day Mm -hmm. I die. You better Mm -hmm. back each other up. So I don't see Mario as a lightweight father. I see him as a strong... Wasn't he a two-term governor or something yeah, like that? He, he was, was supposed yeah, to be a yeah, president, and he chose not to run last minute. And some people said it was a big mistake because if he would have ran, he would have been mm-hmm. a president. He still didn't want to make the decision to run. Yeah. This is not look. Just look at the way he looks. He's, that, a, he's that like is, a mafia. That's he's the a point. Mafia. He's yeah. a tough he's a boss. dad. He's yeah. the kind of a dad that yeah. would raise some tough guys. Yeah. So to me, I don't know. I think Andrew uh, is sitting around saying, you know. The Cuomo people remember today is not Mario Cuomo. The Cuomo people know today, know today. The only people that know Mario Cuomo, they're probably 50 plus, okay, Mm -hmm. 60 plus, and they're going to go away. Yeah, and they're in New York, right? The Cuomo people know today is the two brothers. Those two guys, to be honest with you, here's what I would do if I was those two guys. This is what I would do. I would sign them in a heartbeat. I would sign them in a heartbeat right now. If they did a show together, two brothers, and I'd give them a nice amount per year and could do a show, the two brothers. You got so much history of what to talk about, with, you know, and you, you, there'd be plenty of guests that would be willing to come on your show. And I think people on the right would be willing to come on your of course, show. Of course, yeah. You don't need CNN. To these guys, they think like that's the place to be, CNN, MSNBC, CBS, ABC. Yeah. Bullshit. Those guys own you guys if you go do something like that. Mm-hmm. Go take the podcast route, do a show together. And leave a different kind of a legacy of, hey, here's where I screwed up. Here's what I did with this. But let me tell you guys the experience we got. Here's what our father raised. They can talk how their father raised them. They can talk brothers. They can talk family nucleus. They can talk Italian stories. They can talk food. They can talk who's better with the mom, who's a bigger mama's boy. They can talk so many different things. They're the kind of guys that, you know, I have friends in my life that I fully disagree with politically. But my gosh, I enjoy having dinner with them, right? Mm -hmm. Those will be these guys. I think they're very marketable. Uh, I don't know these guys. I've never, the only thing I think one time we had a communication trying to get Chris here and he asked for a big number to be, I'm like, dude, we're not doing that. We just want you to be on the podcast or not. Anyways, that was a different experience that we had together. But I am a very uh, big fan of them on the way they are with their families. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, someone's going to come back and say, you don't know what they are. Let me tell you their backgrounds tied to the mob, all this stuff. Stop. If you walk on water, fine. All I'm saying to you is they're very marketable. These are two marketable guys that can do something with their legacy. And if I was a son of a Cuomo and Mario's my dad, okay, 
and I'm talking, uh, having a conversation in my head with my dad, my dad, I'm going to be like, hey, man, there's no way in the world you gave us this last name. We're going to let our last name end the way it is ending right now. And the yeah. same people that we brought all these eyeballs for, mm -hmm. Andrew Cuomo did all this stuff for New York. Chris Cuomo did all this stuff for CNN. All of those eyeballs you bought, now they want to crucify you mm -hmm. and hurt your last name? Oh, hell to the no. So, <laughs> but, but that's me. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to handle but, but it. I, but me. I think that'd be a great thing, to, not to cut you off, Adam. I just, just really fast. I think that something like that where people that were on like CNN and they're just all the left going on a network or going like a, on a podcast that you don't have to read a script. You know what I mean? You don't have to be a political activist. Just, we want to talk to you. I want to know who you guys are. Do you guys remember during the pandemic? Uh, I think Chris did a, like a joke about his brother having a big nose. I mean, it was during where, you know, people were dying in like uh, old person homes. But he had, he was like, hey, what's your brother? He pulled like a, a big Q-tip, making fun of his nose. That dynamic, that brother dynamic would be something great to see, not on a it's CNN. It's, 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 yeah. uh, it's, it's for TV. Now, by the way, you know, Chris's podcast is not doing that good right now. No. You know, because, you know, it, 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 there's, okay. So the world of TV, here's a question. Here's a question to ask, okay? So guys that play traditional basketball who they play fundamental basketball, okay? And they go play street ball in, give me the toughest Rocker place, Park. Rocker, Rocker Park. Or they go play in Venice Beach, and you're playing with some tough, tough guys, yeah. right? Fundamental basketball is one thing. Playing with tough men who are going to elbow you, hurt yeah. you, talk shit to you. Yeah. If you're playing for a Christian basketball league and then you go there, it's a major shocker when you do that, right? Okay, fighting in a organized ring boxing with gloves versus go to Thailand or go to certain places where they're doing Muay Thai, Muay Thai, kicking, Muay your Thai kicking your street, brawl, $1,000 bets, $5,000 yeah. bets. It's a very different climate, okay? Mm -hmm. Doing TV on CNN, Fox, your team has got 40 employees whose job is to make you look good, okay? The teleprompter, the script, the writer, the stories, the person telling you in your ear, reminding about this. Remember, November 28th, when he said this, he said this 19 years ago, and you seem so smart because someone's no one's feeding us shit right now. <laughs> the only thing we hear is our own voice. Yeah. This is hard. Oh, yeah. So to go from there to doing this, super hard. By the way, it's also hard for people to go from podcasts to do what Chris and them do. You know why? Because we're long-winded. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand what I'm yeah, saying. Of course, you got to keep it light. We're long-winded. Like when I'm at Dan Bongino, it's like, hey, so so Pat, hey, so Patrick, what do you, we got 30 seconds left. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. go. That's the that's a different format. Big time. So so for us to make that transition there is not easy. For them to make the transition here, it's not easy. We don't like mainstream. Mm -hmm. Because that's not how life is. Life, to me, is an explanation of what you're going through. It may take 18 minutes. I don't give a shit about commercial cuts. Mm -hmm. We got to cut to commercials. Here's Pfizer. Take some more such and such. All right. And if your thing lasts more than four hours with Cialis, yeah. call a doctor. We're back here. So let me tell you what Kamala Harris said. It's a freaking... You know, so for us, what do you think, Tom? What do you think about this, Rob? How do you understand? So, so this is the part with Chris going from mainstream to podcast. Very few people know. Mm -hmm. Like Russell Brand is a great podcaster, but he tried to go have his own TV show. It flopped. Yeah, it's it's not it's not uh, even movies. He they, he had a shot with movies too. It was like mm -hmm. eh. Wow. He came in and came out. He did have Get, a major hit though. So inside of you. Who uh, inside of you? What? <laughs> You, Russell Brand, yeah. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Forget. I, I, no, I know, but what I'm saying is he had like little guest star roles, but what he tried to... What are you talking about? The song was a hit. It was <laughs> You're out of control. Can you not the do it? The song was amazing, but then he tried to be like in the movie Arthur and, I mean, get into the Greek was oh, good, but then his career... Oh, not shirt. He's oh, my so God, he's so freaking funny. By, by the I way, speaking of funny. Chris Cuomo, I just went and... Because I knew you were going to go talk, because he does have a podcast that yeah. launched almost a year ago, I think in uh, April of 2022, so it's... Been nine months. Look at the guests that Chris Cuomo can get. He doesn't get a ton of views. A couple of his yeah, only two videos have over a hundred thousand views. Who, two. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have But here's the guests that Chris Cuomo has had on his podcast. Talk about A-listers. Bill Maher, Whoopi Goldberg, our good friend Neil deGrasse Tyson, Stephen A. Smith, Sean Penn, Alec Baldwin. Anybody. He'll get what? anybody. Yeah. Tyler Perry, Joe Manchin, Andrew Yang, Paul Manafort, our old friend over there. Your friend Noam Chomsky, Bob Costas. I mean, Dr. Phil, Tulsi yeah. Gabbard. Dude gets 
But no eyeballs. But no eyeballs because he's but not no on eyeballs. CNN. He's like in a basement somewhere. Chris, if you're watching, Valuetainment uh, would like to have a conversation. Yeah, with we'll, you. we'll call it the Cuomos. Bring your brother. Why not? I no, watch it, it. listen. Obviously, this is not a pitch. They, they're gonna. They got to go to the people that they're comfortable with because that's where they got to go. But all I'm saying is, if I was somebody that was in a safe space for them that they would want to go create content with. I would, in a heartbeat, pitch a show between the two of them together. I would watch in a heartbeat. I'd pitch a show it. between two of them together and throw a middle host, you know, somebody like in a, you know, that's, and then they can do whatever they want to do. People come up, current events, politics, business, everything. stories. Have family, everything. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyways, hopefully we got them a job. But uh, let's continue yeah. here. <laughs> let's continue here. Let's continue. Let's talk about uh, th- this guy named uh, 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 Donald Trump. Let's talk about a story with this guy. Okay. Every time we tell stories with him, some people are happy, some people are upset, but let's do it anyway. So the idea is to try to be fearless. So here we go. All right. So, <laughs> so let's go through this. That's not Ron, is it? Ex President Donald Trump posts a photo of Florida Governor DeSantis allegedly drinking and partying with high school girls. Okay. So here's a picture if you want to put it up. Uh, former President Donald Trump posted a photo on the so- Truth Social, which was allegedly showing Florida Governor Ron DeSantis drinking and partying with high school girls. More than 20 years ago in the photo, a young man appearing to be DeSantis is seen sitting on the couch with three high school girls alongside with photo of President Trump wrote, that's not Ron, is it? He would never do such a thing. Trump also reposted a message made by another t- uh, t- uh, Truth Social user who indicated that the message read, Ron DeSantis was having a drink party with uh, his students when he finished high school teacher. Having drinks with underage girls and cuddling with them certainly looks pretty gross. And uh, how do you pronounce that word? Which one? The Ida? Ephobophilia. Ifibophili- <laughs> okay. You know Trump didn't write that. The photo that, was uh, taken by when DeSantis was teaching history and government at Darlington uh, School in uh, Rome, Georgia during 2001-2002 school. According to the New York Times, two former students, both women, remembered him attending the last two parties where alcohol was served. They said that the parties took place after graduation. And that they were not bothered by his presence at the time, although they question it now. One of the former students was quoted saying it was his first job out of Yale. He was cute. He didn't really think too much about it. Okay, so there's two things here. One, the picture. Two, Trump posting the picture. Okay. Um, I'll open it up, Tom, if you want to go first. Tell me about the picture. What do you think about the picture? And two, what do you think about Trump actually posting a picture? Uh, I, I don't know what to think about the picture. If it's if it's really DeSantis, you know, a teacher going to a party and there's alcohol and they're underage, that's that's certainly not good judgment, but that's also when when was this? And the other thing is, I don't think Trump's got the moral authority to talk about this particular topic, really. If you're going to come out and, and go after somebody, you, you, you know, you got to have – you got to have the moral authority to do it. And I just I, I, I think there's so many other things that are going on that basically this is mud boogeyman, you know, politics here. I think Trump should stay on the message saying, hey, this is what I built. I gave him the opportunity to be governor. This is this is what happened. Instead, he runs a picture like this. The backlash on this was pretty severe. You know, there's a lot of people that are on the right that were like, Dude, you're not. This doesn't help us. This doesn't help us in 24, and I don't think this was a good angle. So I'm uh, not good judgment for DeSantis way back in the day. If it happened as it's being shown, I mean, if this is the, if we're seeing pure truth out of this, and I just, uh, it disappoints me. I think we need to elevate this, and we need to talk about all the things that are that are important. And <clears throat> it just seems like a cheap distraction. But, but here's my question: Did you do you expect anything less from Trump? DeSantis is is the enemy because he ha- he's going to go against them. This is just showing you, bro, that whoever's doing this, mind you, who got this picture? That's 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 opposition research on your opponent. A, those girls, you know, notice how at the end the girls are like, uh, well, you know, it didn't really bother me. But, dude, all, all it's going to have to take is Trump to bring one of these girls out to one of these debates, put her in the crowd and be like, yeah, now she's actually changed her mind. And she was like, it was just <laughs> right back. I mean, he's notorious for doing that. Yeah. But then mind you, a, I mean, to me, that doesn't even look like him. I don't know if it is him, but for him to say something like uh, grooming the high school girls, something like that. It's like, bro, how old was he? 26, I think 24, 23. No. Well, in, in this photo, no, he was if 20. I, if I'm Go just ahead. doing basic math, <laughs> by the way, you and Ron DeSantis are literally the same age. I think you're a month apart. Yep. Okay. So he's 44. Uh, I think it's, I want to say September. If he does get elected, he'll be what the second youngest president mm-hmm. ever. Yep. This is what well, this would be. 
you know, 18 months from now. So he's 44. He'll be 45, 46. I think JFK was the youngest ever elected at 43. Mm -hmm. So if I'm just doing basic math here, Ron was 22 years old here, mm -hmm. partying with 19-year-olds. Yeah. 18-year-olds. Yeah. This is par for the course in college. What are we talking about here? Yeah. This isn't a big deal. Talk about the knock on Trump is, you know, Miss Universe. He goes into all the pageants. These girls grabbing him by the, you know, yeah. so like this is Trump. This is what he does. If you don't think that Trump is sitting back and thinking, who's this round dance sanctimonious? Yeah. I built this man. Yeah. You don't think he's about to get petty and jealous? Of course. How the hell is he beating him in the polls right of now? Of course, of course. By the way, I don't think <clears throat> a year ago we're having less than a year ago, nine months ago, we had Christina Pushaw here. We had other people weighing on whether we thought Ron DeSantis would be running for president. Yeah, I think at this point, when you're leading yes. the polls, you have to. you're running. Yeah, this what are we talking moment. about this here? This is a moment. And the fact that he's the now favorite, just picture this. A year from now, we're going to have Republican primaries. It's going to be Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis on stage. That's about to get very ugly. And I think, this is my opinion, I think Ron is going to sort of take the high road. He's not going to play in the mud with Trump. And Trump is just going to look petty and just kind of come out of him with little things like this, and I don't think it's going to be a good look for Trump. But but at what point? Uh, <clears throat> but at what point do the gloves have to come off for him? Because bro, there's only so much that. Well, mind you, this guy's Navy. You know what I mean? How long is it going to take for a, a Navy SEAL dude who's been through this shit to just be like, you know what, dude, I'm done? Do you think he's not going to give in at all? That's not easy, bro. I, I just I think he does not benefit from <laughs> from going in the mud with Trump. You know what do they say that you know, never wrestle with a pig because. Uh, you both end up in the mud, and the pig the pig actually likes it. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna he has a year and a half to take the high road, take the high road, Ron, take the, and it's just gonna highlight how petty Trump what do you will get, be. What do you got, this Pat? You're smiling for some reason. And there's already four now. Sununu says that it's ninety percent certain that his exploratory committee has found the necessary funds. He's going. Sunu Sununu's going. So I have Nikki Haley. We have Sununu. It's Sununu's doing what? You saying the governor of uh, New Hampshire is running? He's gonna run. These are no these, yeah, these, these people are, have no shot. These are just for the resume. I ran for president. What were you giggling about? Because so, I want to. So here's the, here's the thing. Yeah. Do you remember when? So have you taken jujitsu, martial arts? Have you taken anything? Have you ever no, taken more anything? Okay. What'd you take? You took what? I did. I, when I was a kid, I was big in taekwondo. You took taekwondo. What what did you take, Tom? I I did not. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. <laughs> He was gonna say something. I, I, I did not. He is the son Vinny. of a I'm rocket scientist. <laughs> what is happening right now? Wow, well, they, they build. What, what do I look like? A brain surgeon? Well, I'm yeah. from New York, so you, you know, know. I'm boxing. I'm from New York. No, I did boxing. Under your house. But what'd you do? I'm from New York, so I did boxing, but I did judo too. You don't know if I got a yeah. knife. <laughs> you know what's I up. I also no, but, took but I, no, <laughs> judo. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like, judo. Here's why I'm asking this question. Here's what I'm asking mm -hmm. this question. So my son goes to jujitsu. Yeah. Okay. And I go and watch him. This Tico, both of them, they go to okay. Because he right? choked me out on your boat. You know that, right? <laughs> did he really? Did you did not to cut By you the off? Way, honestly, did you feel I, it? I swear to God, look at these two rascals. Yeah. Tico got me in a headlock, and guess who comes? Dylan grabs his wrist and pushes more, and I'm seeing stars. I go, this is a team. Vinny, on a serious note, did I, it hurt you? I swear on our friendship, you know, I he told, got me. Go he locked it in. I told him, don't do that to me. Oh. And, and they, they think <laughs> it doesn't me? hurt. No, no, I told him, don't do that Dude. anymore. It actually hurts. Anyway. Anyway, go ahead. So one day, 20 years from now, they're going to watch us and laugh so about funny, it. So funny, bro. So they're, do, so they're doing jujitsu, right? And I watch them. I'm like, okay, hey, you go on top. All right, hey, so you go on top. So you do this. So you do that. And they're, doing, they're, they're fighting. They're doing all that stuff. Okay, great. So w imagine if you're the best jujitsu guy yeah. within that environment, okay? Okay. Which there's guidelines, there's rules, you can't do this, you can't do that. Say you do this for 10 years, okay? You're black belt, you're double black belt, I don't know, you're black belt with seven red stripes. We can tell you, we take whatever you are, okay, jujitsu. And then you go fight with this other guy who has never done jujitsu. But he is accustomed to fighting with knives. The people he's fought with, they have they shank. They they have a they they, they, they hit shank. you with they, they, <laughs> they, they, have, they have beer they bottles. Yeah, they yeah. have beer bottles. Yeah. It's a street fight. It's a brawl. DeSantis has fought in confined environments. Mm -hmm. He's about to fight <laughs> a street brawler. Yep. You have to understand, it's a lot easier for the street brawler to beat a confined person 
than for a confined person to beat a street brawler. Mm -hmm. By the way, I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. Somebody may say, well, no, you've never fought someone. I'm just telling you, this it, it, Trump has fought people in New York that they were political people, and he was able to get the permits and this and that and all this other stuff. But he's also won in business, and he's also gone and become a president. So Ron has to understand you are about to face the dirtiest, you know, smack talking. He's going to do everything and anything to beat you. Are you okay with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. If you are, guess what? Get in the ring. Yeah. And, and Pat, he's bitter. He's I, bitter, too. I, I, I think you make up a great point. I agree, and I'm going to give you a little bit of pushback. I'm being a, 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 yeah. what is it? analogous is what I'm analogous. doing. Analogous. Love yeah. that. I think you are right. The, the one knock that I will say on Ron is he's already being sort of crowned the next president of the United States before he's really been on the national stage. He's obviously done well in Florida, run re won re-election. He's crushed it, killed it. He was supposed to win by you know four points. He won by 24 points, whatever it was, and he's sort of being coronated before he's actually earned it, presidential-wise. Um, and I think that's for a multitude of reasons. Um, where, I, where I will say that your analogous might be off is that it's still going to be confined because where they are going to debate is going to be on the RNC stage. That's not going to matter. In a primary. That's not going to matter. What do you mean? I'm saying yeah. that that's, we've already seen yeah. what Trump did to little Marco Rubio, yeah. to low energy jet. Oh. Like he has a blueprint of what Dude, to expect. Are you, are you telling me this? Okay. Did you see what he did to, let me go through the list of names of what he did. Day one. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Trump? Day yeah. one, Jeb Bush starts with $140 million. Mm -hmm. He's at the debate, okay? Day one. And he's doing the debate. While he's going through the debate, let me see if there's music in this. If there's music in this, I can't play it because it's going to be, uh, uh, what do you call it, restricted. But if there's no music in it, I'll play it for you to see what he does. Day one. Okay, when he came to debate Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush has $140 million he's starting off with. Trump has nothing. It's his own money. In day, is there music? Hang on. Day one, he destroys Jeb. Mm -hmm. Then he destroys Marco. Then he destroys, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, ben Carson, sweetest man. <laughs> then he destroys Ted Cruz. Then he destroys one by one. Carly Fair, by Reno, one, Rand by Paul, one By one, one by list. one, yep. by one. Literally destroyed. Then all of this is being built out to face the dirtiest politician in the history of politics. Hillary Clinton. Hillary. Audio on this? I'm with her. Okay, I want you to watch this. Play this real quick. We can play this because there's no music. Rob, I want to send it to you. Rob? Yeah, I'm going to text it to her. I just want you to watch mm. this and see how eloquently he destroyed Jeb Bush. Okay? You guys are thinking like this is going to be a fun match here. Listen. The, the training you get, like, for example, you know, street fighting, shooting guns. The other day, you and I went and shot guns. You said something very interesting where you said, it doesn't matter if you shoot every single day. When the first time you pull and you hear that, the first one you feel, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you saw it was me, you, and Sam. By the way, just so everybody knows, mm -hmm. just so everybody knows, I've been shooting for a long time, but I don't shoot pistols. I've been, I like shooting rifle. M16 rifle. That's, my, that's what I like. Uh, 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 Adam, mm -hmm. this guy, we shoot the body. I'm in the square when I'm shooting. Okay, so 99% of my shots are in, in on target. the body, on, on target. target. Vinny's not on target. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm, this is like zero jokes here. 100% of Vinny's <laughs> shots was in this circle. <laughs> was, Did you hear what like I just it. said? Tom, two hours <laughs> later, 100% of his <laughs> shots are only in the same circle. So then I'm like, Vinny, what the <laughs> hell are you doing? <laughs> Guess what? He says, dude, I was an MP in the Air Force for seven yeah, years. I, I was, did on, I was on a shooting team. It was insane how amazing this guy was. But some things you do in your life, you may be good at it, and then you go with another person. Like, dude, I'm like, dude, I thought I'm going to be good. I looked at Vinny. I'm like, dude, Vinny's here. I'm like down <laughs> here in this game. He's about to go with somebody that's been doing Sharp this shooter. for freaking 60. Just watch what he does. This first debate. Jeb Bush, $140 million. He's supposed to be the next president. Let me give you Jeb Bush's resume. His <laughs> oldest brother's a president. His father's a president. His grandfather was Senator Prescott. This guy is supposed to be the next president, and he was a two-term governor of the great state of Florida. Mm -hmm. And then look what Trump does to him. Watch this. Property from an elderly woman. Let me talk. Quiet. <laughs> talk a, lot of time. a lot of times. 
That's all of his donors and special oh, shit, there's music. Stop <laughs> it. Yeah. All of so, his donors, yeah. all of his... Dude. So, 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 no, but anyways, anyway, what he says is there's all of the donors. Is when we talked to the RNC, the RNC said, we can't bring anybody here. He says, I don't have any guests here. These are all RNC chose the guests and the donors to be here. Wow. And all the people that are in the room are Jeb Bush's people. And he says, you think I'm lying to you? Here's what they did. I couldn't bring anybody. Mm. So whatever you're hearing. So immediately the viewer went to all these people that are booing Trump. We're paid. And we're paid to, to be there. there. Boom. The, you can't. There is not a manual for you to read to know how to handle those types of situations. Yeah, I agree. You and I can sit with the top 50 greatest debaters of all time, and I can invest a year into you and say every day for eight hours, these guys going to teach you. We're going to spend $10 million to make you bulletproof on how to debate, right? A year from now. I'll get good. 60 years. <laughs> 60 years. Good luck. If I train, how long do I need to train? I want to tell you this right now. How long do I need to train jujitsu and UFC and boxing? How many of the greatest instructors in the world can train me? I put a $50 million budget for me to train for one year straight. How many hours and dollars do I need to do to train to be John Jones? Yeah, there's no, there's no amount of time. There's no money. There's what no, if I spend $100 million? Will I be John Jones no, in a year? Never. The, the answer is what? Say it again. Never. Say it to my face. You will never beat John Jones in a fight, no matter how much money in one year. You're 100% right. Yeah. This is the part that people are like underestimating. By the way, I'm not sitting here telling you who's a better candidate for America. I'm not sitting here talking to you about politics. I'm not talking to you about any of that stuff. You're fighting John Jones. This is not a regular guy. Yep. This is a John Jones street brawler. Yep. You best bring it. Because he's going to get you dirty, and he's very comfortable with that. You know, guys come after us, and they call us out. And say, Let me tell you, Patrick, is this, a, this recently, what happened yeah, this last weekend, yeah. and they did another live a couple of days ago. Yeah. Do you have any clue what I've been doing the last 23 years? Do you have any clue, like, what kind of dirt other people, the games, the minute? Like, do you know even the life? So when somebody's like, what are you doing? You're making yourself look like a clown when you do some of this stuff, right? But more power to you. Keep doing what you're doing. This guy is a street brawler. And you're about to go against a guy like this. So whatever they're showing, this is really what it's going to come down to. The only thing it's going to come down to is the following. Democrats. Let's talk Democrat strategy. If I'm in the Democrat strategy, strategic side, here's what I'm doing. You ready? If I represent behind closed doors, I'm a strategist. I'm the guy they bring in. But no one knows who I am. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're just a killer. No one knows who I am. Yeah. And I ask. I will only help you guys if you not once mention my name, and I want to sign contract. If you do, I can sue you for a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. You can't ever mention my name. Yes, perfect. Here's what I'm doing. Game number one, create a civil war. Do whatever you can to show any kind of polls, any kind of quotes to piss off Trump. Put up as many polls of people saying DeSantis is ahead. The more good quotes you put about tr about DeSantis being ahead of Trump, Trump doesn't know how to handle that because he's a psycho competitor. He's going to go for DeSantis's throat. When he does, DeSantis can only take so much. Eventually, after thousands of text messages of, did you hear what Trump just said about you? You're going to be sick of touching the phone or you're going to be sick of people saying, did you hear what Trump said about you? And he's going to say, I don't give a shit. Then eventually in a press conference, someone's going to ask something. He's going to say something back, and they're going to poke him. Boom. Trump's going to use that as ammunition to come after him, and he's going to keep hitting that over and over and over and over and over again. Then the left wins because once they find out who their ideal candidate is going to be, whether it's going to be Newsom, whether it's going to be Biden, whether it's going to be Hillary, whether it's going to be Michelle, all of that content that they're going to get for one year is going to be used against the front runner on the Republican side. Yep. That's the strategy of the left. And I feel if they have the right people, they're helping them out. That's exactly what they're going to do to these two guys. It's called divide and conquer. They're going to play it over and over and over and over again. And the way you do it, the content has to piss off who first? Trump. Everything has to be about pissing off Trump, not DeSantis. Yep. Mm -hmm. You don't need to piss off DeSantis. Because yep. DeSantis is going to be like, yeah, whatever. You need to piss off Trump, and yep. Trump is going to go after DeSantis. So, again, by the way, I'm not a political strategist. This is not my world. I'm more a business strategist. I've played a complete different uh, behind closed doors games that I've, you know, things that I've been a part of. But watch what happens here the next 12 to 18 months. I agree with that. And I, and I, cause I think the left has to have something to go against it because whoever does come out from that side, 
is going to be the favorite unless the left has something up their sleeves like that, like the whole Russian collusion bullshit that they tried. They, they have to have something. What, what is it going to be? You know what I mean? There's only one name. Up. There's only one name. What? Michelle Obama. I mean, that's nah, true. That's, that's, I don't think that's a thing. Well, you here, don't, here's like, everything you're saying is accurate. Everything you're saying is right in 2016. Because you know how they say what a difference a year makes? This is eight years later, Pat. Eight years later. I think at the time, there was such a yearning for something different. Whether you like Trump, love Trump, hate Trump, despise Trump, what he did in 2016 was absolute an anomaly. We've never seen anything like that in American history. This guy comes on stage shushing people, making fun of people, bringing alleg- like Clinton uh, assailants like, yeah. on stage. Like This is reality to its finest. My only question is this. Is the shtick getting old? Is the shtick getting old? As an example, we're talking about movies. When Jurassic Park came out, or the Avengers came out, or Rocky... Oh my God, have you seen this dinosaurs? When Jurassic Park 7 came out, it's like, all right, we get it. The fucking dinosaurs, dinosaurs eating people, it. got it. it. And that's essentially what I'm saying here. In 2016, Trump was Jurassic Park. Holy shit, I've never seen it. It's like, now he comes out again, he does this thing. It's like, we've seen the movie, Donald. We get it. And that's the only reason Joe Biden won the election in 2020 is because people were done with the movie. We've seen it, Trump. You're doing the same thing over again, Sleepy Joe. You know who's you know, it's not a Trump thing, it's not a it's not a DeSantis thing, it's not a Biden thing. We're gonna find out what the population thinks, what American thinks. And we're about to find out. Yeah. I think there's a yearning in this country. For, we're done with the old men. We're done with Biden. A, we're done with Trump. Difference we're between, looking for something there's new. A bro, you, you, okay, you think the world is based off your yearning? You, you, Me? You think, you think that America, you think the world and competition where there's any kind of competition is based on the yearning? Really? You think that's what it is? Let me ask you another question here. H- how old is Dana White right now? Is Dana White getting old? Is UFC getting old? Is Conor McGregor talking shit getting old? Is... Fighting getting old. Is people who talk shit getting old? Is Jake Paul getting old? Is Logan Paul getting old? Is Andrew Tate getting old? What if you were to say what type of personalities are creating a ton of momentum the last five years? What type of person? Oh, is there more DeSantis types of personalities? More Newsom type of personalities? More what kind of personalities? Trolls, trolls, it, it's talkers. trolls that are growing the <laughs> last five, ten years because social media favors trolls. Yep. And, or and, eyeballs and attention. Well, no, no but, doubt. But yep. that, but but here here's the other part. Here's here's the other part that you're not even considering. But by the way. Who do you think I want to be president between the two? Who do you think I want to be president? I want you to actually think about the answer there. Who do you think I want to be president? When, when I think about Trump or DeSantis, here's all I want you to think about yeah. be- before you say Trump. When Why not? I wasn't going to. Okay. When I think about Trump or DeSantis, what is the most important thing I, as a father, as a businessman, as a man, care about? What do I care about? A role model in leadership, I would assume. I want right policies. Mm-hmm. I want you to leave me alone. Mm-hmm. I want you to let me work. I want you to let me build my business. I want you to don't overregulate every freaking day you wake up. I want you to leave taxes in a reasonable number mm-hmm. that we're paying taxes. These last three years, every year has been the most taxes I've ever paid in my life. And every year, I want to say the last three years, every year has been the most taxes I've paid in my entire life. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Yeah. So 2019 was the best, most ever. You would know these numbers with yeah. mine because you know my numbers. Totally. 2019, 2020 was the most ever combined. Then 2021 became the most combined ever since the day I was born. Then 2022 was the most combined ever since the day I was born. It's been back to back to back. I don't have a problem. Just show me the results on what I'm getting. I'm good with that. I'm looking for policies. But this is not about who you want, who I want. This is about who's going to win and what the strategy DeSantis' camp has to know. You have to be prepared for who you're going up against. Think about what ammunition this guy has. Watch the question I'm going to ask, and I want to see your answer. You ready? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a question here right now, and I want you to process this and see how quickly you come up with it. Give me the biggest endorsers of Barack Obama when he he ran in 2008. Oprah Winfrey. Exactly. It's the first thing I was going to say, and you said that. Okay. How big was Oprah Winfrey? The biggest. The biggest. Huge. Okay. Who else endorsed Obama? Everybody in Hollywood, everybody in music industry, everybody in sports, everybody and everybody. Okay. Tell me the biggest endorsers of Donald Trump. 
Silence. I think Chachi oh. from Scott Bayo. By, by the way, look how you're joking. Yeah, I'm no, not look, joking. But, but, I but literally he, think but that's in, the biggest thing. But think about yeah. how quiet you got. No, but he doesn't need anybody. What's the point? He doesn't need anybody. This is not a guy that some people are, well, he's going to need this endorsement because that's no. not going to work. You don't understand. This is a guy that doesn't give a shit if Elon Musk want to, wants to endorse him or not. He doesn't care if the you know biggest guys want to endorse him. He's not that guy. So here's but what's he happening. he should probably care. What, yeah, I agree. If I'm sitting down interview yeah. him, I'm going to say, why would you call Elon Musk a bullshit artist? You, what are you, you doing? You don't want Elon on your side? But that's, that's, that's okay, the yeah. right question to ask. Mm -hmm. But in, I'm telling you how I see him. I may be wrong, but the way I see him is he doesn't give a shit if you endorse him or well, not. I think it's, the challenge is he gets his, in his own way. But go ahead. He does. But he's proven, like, it, there's a part of him that he's shown and said, hey, you want to be on my side? Great. You don't want to be on my side? Get him out of here. Get somebody else to replace him. Whether that's right or wrong, it's not way you're, uh, what, the way you would do it. It's work for him. Here, what, no doubt, it worked for him in 2016. What does, I was he, have very to, explicit what does he have today that he didn't have in 2020 when he lost? You ready? What he has today that he didn't have in 2020 when he truth lost? Truth Social. No, who gives a shit about Truth Social? <laughs> no, I don't care about Truth yeah, Social. No, either way, yeah. Do you know what he has that he didn't have in 2020? People can't be this naive, bro. Trump. What? He's got a chip. No, forget about the chip. He's had a chip since before he was born. Oh. When his parents conceived him, there was a chip already in the shoulder. Yeah. This guy's mm -hmm. born. With a chip, okay? Is, is it all the stuff, Pat, that's been exposed with all the Twitter oh, and all the, brother, all the COVID? The all the Twitter everything? files, the New Twitter, York Post, COVID. Hunter Biden, everything that he, said. that he said, now he has proof to say yes. Russia was fake, fake, Twitter files, New York Post, Hunter Biden, I should have been president, they were wrong. This and and you can't say anything to that. Gain of function. Yeah. There's nothing you can say to that. He's gonna say, look what did you see what Fauci said this week with CDC and vaccines? No. Did you guys see the article with Fauci this week with vaccines? No. With, well, we should be very careful with the mRNA because some of the things we have to be. This is just a couple days ago, by the way. I don't know if you guys. Before, before you shift gears, can, uh, you're going to go to shift. I'm not trying to shift no, gears. No, no. All no, I'm saying yeah. to you is just think how a great storyteller and a marketer and how great troller he is. He has more content today where he can give a five hour speech on this. And he'll keep going and going and going and going and going. Now, Twitter's got him back. Facebook's got him back. Instagram's got him back. Google's about to give him back. He's got Truth Social. He's got all this other stuff. And you give him all this content. Yep. I mean, this is like I, a— By the way, fantastic point. Fully agree. And then here's my advice. If he makes it, which I assume he will, if he uses the word I versus we— I told you this. I was right. I called it. If it's if it's that, people are over that. He's going to. It, but he had, that's he my is, point for sure. But if he says, "Wouldn't you?" We need to understand the American people. We all under, like. Yeah. He definitely. If won't. he and, makes and, and, it and, about him, he yeah. will lose. And, and by the way, you know what else is going? to You know why this is all playing into his hand? Here's what's going to be playing into his hand. What's going to happen all year long this long? Did you see what AOC did the other day with fake Hunter Biden laptop? Did you see what she said? Have you no. seen this? No. Half true. And she's like, this is half. The half true Hunter Biden fake laptop that everybody on the conservative sides want to talk about and investigate. That's a sign of weakness. 100%. So the next 12 months, you're going to see Fauci being investigated. You're going to see gain of function being investigated. Twitter's on right should now. be you're investigated. See, but but what, I, Fauci what, should I'm, be what I'm trying to tell you is won't. that does not help DeSantis. That helps Trump because all of that worked against Trump. Yes. That didn't work against De DeSantis. What DeSantis has going on is the following. Nobody in America as a governor handled COVID, scoreboard, leader's bulletin, data. Nobody handled it better than him. That is a salute everyone's given him. Well, he went from 34,000 votes to 1.5 million votes. That's where he's at. But there is a, <laughs> there's another dimension to this game of politics, man. There's a very different dimension to this game of so, politics. So you kind of asked the question. And so you asked, who do you think I want to see yeah. president? Yeah. Do you, I, don't have an, I, don't, I, I literally curious. don't know. I'm curious. Who do you think? I don't know. I, 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 I who do you think, think you would have voted for I'm either curious. one of them. Who do you think? I, I think we're on the same page. Yeah. You know, am I rooting for DeSantis? No. But when I objectively look at what I think he would do as a president, so I could do this, 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 and live this, this, and this, that's who I'd kind of like to see. Um, I look at taxes. I look at things that are going on in Washington right now, and I just roll my eyes, and I'm like, this is in incredible. And I say, you know, I think DeSantis would be a moderating force and all that. But I think about it the same way you did. It's you know, it's it's like who would you like to see win the Super Bowl, and who do you 
think is going to win the Super Bowl or who do you think is going to walk through those playoffs? And I agree with everything you've you've said. I, I think America doesn't understand the core Trump voter, and they are about to be energized by exactly what you said. I was right. Yes. That is powerful. I was right. right. Yep. I, he's not going to— so, I think who, who, oh I, I don't know if did you give an answer? Sure I did. I did it very clearly. I said, would I like to see DeSantis as president for the moderation and everything that's okay. going to come so out? So you're of that? picking DeSantis. Sure. sure. If he's going to manage the country the way he managed Florida, you, then you kind of trust that guy and say he's going to keep the peace and I'll be able to do my mm-hmm. thing, but my business and do it. Same for you, Pat? Well, I'm saying what, I don't think Pat would be mad. I don't think you'd be mad if, if Trump, like, obviously we see with DeSantis, very good, very attractive candidate. But going back to the Trump thing, I don't think he'd be mad that Trump, I don't think you'd be mad that Trump won because at least this time he'd get a kind of a fair shot with all the shit that was against him. I've said this before. At least he'd be having, like, no Trump, no no Russia, no this, no f- pandemic if they don't release, you know, if China doesn't have another goddamn outbreak. But I, I'm not going to front. If you flip the coin, I wouldn't give a shit which one. So I'm which be one would you pick? For Pat, I would say no, DeSantis. For, you. For, for me... I, I honestly wouldn't care. I'm being yeah, dead ass. Zero I, I don't get. I don't give a shit beca- because because no 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 be, because. But hear my point though. During Trump, the only, during Trump, the only thing that was hurt that was hurting everybody Vinny, were people's feelings. Pick, bro. Were people's pick feelings. One. This isn't it. The- I'd go Trump. Because okay. I, I want to see him have a, a fair shot without the Russia bullshit, okay. without this, without fuck Fauci, without all these assholes. I'd let, want him to go let by Pat himself. Let answer his, so, his own question. So let me. So concerns, concerns of what. I worry about. This mm-hmm. is what I worry about. What is the last thing left to do to Trump that they haven't done yet? Indict him. They've pretty much done everything. On Epstein to, Island, there was a video of him doing but something. They literally like, kill him. That's it. Okay. <laughs> By the way, they've already killed his reputation. They've yeah. killed his business. That's they've it. killed everything that's about it. him. So that is the last yeah. thing that's left, which is a play. Uh, a card that was used against Kennedy, against yep. Reagan, against Lincoln, against RFK, against mm-hmm. MLK. I mean, there's a wow. list of yeah. them. By right? the way, we are not condoning. No, no, no. Just no. to be clear Zero. here, everybody. Zero. No, hell no. All yeah. I'm saying to you is there is different forms of assassination. Yes. Character assassination Being is yep. very, very, very hardcore. Financial assassination mm-hmm. is hardcore when you don't have any money. And what, like, what a bunch of the guys from New York, Giuliani used to be a hero in New York. Now, uh, think about how's he making money? They took his license away from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was a guy that you loved when 9 11 happened. Now you want to trash the guy because he can be, become someone's lawyer? Yeah. You know, you got a, a few other names on that list. So they're going to do financial, character. Typically, if you do financial, it's done. It's done when you do financial. They can't do that to him. Character assassination, 99% of the time, it's done. He's Teflon, doesn't bother him. There's only one thing left. So my concern is that, and it may not even be from the states, and maybe somebody else, all this other stuff, that just is not happy with this guy becoming the leader. Because if he becomes president, tariffs are coming back. China is going to be miserable. He's going to expose him. He's going to make the tribunal court with, you know, where did COVID come from, gain of function. You know, fa- There's going to be so many people that don't want him to be there. Mm-hmm. Trust me, Democrats are begging for DeSantis to win to be the lead, or their strategy is to make sure Trump wins but give him so much content that whoever they put up against him, and there's only one or two people that can beat Trump if they go up against him, Michelle's one of them. If I'm on the left right now, you have no idea how many conversations I'm having with Michelle Obama. Please, please. Exactly. You have no please, idea how many please, conversations yeah. I'm having with Michelle Obama. They fear that Hillary is going to get in there because you can't prevent Hillary. You, who's going to tell Hillary, don't run, and she listens? Nobody. Nobody. If Hillary's going to run, she's going to run. Hillary sees herself as an equal to Trump. He, Hillary sees herself as, and by the way, to me, she is, except she's not marketable, yeah. and she's not a good speaker. She's not. So to go back to it, I want policies. I'm concerned about age. I'm concerned about uh, whether you're going to last and stay energized to fulfill. So even if he gets elected in, in a year and a half, two years, January 2025 is going to be inauguration. How old is Trump going to be January 2025? Probably 80 almost. So you mean to tell me you're going to go till 84? He's a pretty healthy guy. He's golfing. He's walking. He's active. He's a guy that— He doesn't drink, no drugs. No, he doesn't do drugs. He doesn't do any of that stuff. But that's the concern. DeSantis is younger, all of that stuff. So, you know, it's—, it's it, it, the policies DeSantis, I believe, will drive. Mm-hmm. I believe Trump will also drive. They're about to go do character assassination on Biden, I believe, on uh, DeSantis, I believe, the next nine or 12 months. 
And we've not yet seen how he's going to handle that. If Trump so, was elected so, in 2024, uh, 2024, he would be 78 years old when he steps foot in the Oval Office for the second time. So 82 years old. Right now, Joe Biden is currently 80 years old. Yeah, so yeah. he'd be younger than Joe yeah. Biden if he yeah. were to get a second. Yeah. So, yeah. Is your pick Trump? My pick is either way, but I have concerns with both of them. Okay. I have concern. I am. I have concerns that they will because some. Okay. So sometimes when you have a squeaky clean resume, sometimes when you have a squeaky clean resume, what happens? What's the What's the fear of somebody that's squeaky clean? <laughs> They're hiding something here, buddy. <laughs> but 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 so so everybody plays a facade. We're all mm -hmm. playing a facade. Mm -hmm. Your facade is what? I'm a comedian. I'm a funny guy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tom's message from the outside for people that don't know. If you don't know Tom, what do you think Tom is? A good good guy, driver. Christian well, man, yeah. good father, who knows a lot, has done a lot of business, has got good yeah. takes. That's Tom. Yeah. You are trying to change a bit of your story where you're going from good boyfriend, fun guy to hang out with to you'd like to be a family guy and get married and have kids. Am I wrong or am I saying it pretty yeah, correctly? I'm going through a growing up phase. Yes. Okay. But you're recreating yourself yeah, sure. in, a, in essence, right? But if somebody, say we go three months ago, you know what somebody would say about you? That's a guy that's made his money. He, you know, he's having his fun. He's good with the ladies. He's well-spoken. He's a good host. He's chill. That's Adam, right? Every one of us has a certain thing. I want you to think about the most square person in your life. Do, you don't need to say the name. <laughs> you don't need to say the name. Oh, but, sorry, but think about person you know. Think yeah. about the most square person in high school, growing up, mm -hmm. or in life. Yeah. Think about the square person. Okay. Okay. Do you know that square person, your mom would always say, why can't you be like, we had these couple friends, my mom mm -hmm. would say, why can't you be like this person? Why can't you be like that? Why can't you? I go, oh my God, so freaking annoying. And But the, when the stuff came out, oh, that guy was doing drugs, that guy was doing this, that guy was doing like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm so glad I wasn't. So when stuff was like, well, Pat, yeah, okay. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. But DeSantis is... M.O. is squeaky clean. Yeah, big time. So the smallest little thing about him is going to get a b bigger reaction. If somebody said right now, the, you know, Trump has got a girlfriend in, you know, South Florida that, you know, such and such, you know what you would do with that? We may not even cover the story. Yep. It's like, obviously, I mean, it's, yeah, you know, whatever. whether it's true, but whether it's not true. It doesn't whatever. matter if right. it's yeah. true or not. When you play. This like this is why Good point. this is why I don't like to talk about that. I go to church and I do all this. I don't like to talk about that because to me, every time people get into too much Jesus, too much Bible, too much this, those people who did it too much to kind of uh, uh, what do you call it? Like like put the, one up you holier than thou. Right. I, I've I've always been very careful. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, when somebody uses the Jesus card against me, I'm like, yeah, you know what? The people that I know that follow God and are living the good life, they typically don't go around doing away the way you're doing it and using it to kind of feel like you're more Christian than I am and you're better than I am. Yeah, I don't relate to that. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, those people walk on water and they eventually have a very hard fall. Mm -hmm. So that's the concern both sides. Are you, are, is that the analogous uh, metaphor? I'm trying with, to be analogous Ron? and fearless all that. combined at the same yeah, time. Yeah, speaking what I'm of trying Jesus, to let's all yeah. hold hands here. Let's, yeah. Just yeah. Get it. let's take a moment. No, no, but, but you understand the point I'm trying I to make exactly to you. What That's you're my fear. Yeah. When, when stories come out fear. with Ron yeah. of having a girlfriend or whatever the story is with the drinking, you're saying that's going to carry a lot more weight because it's so new and he is it, he's not used to these. Yeah, Trump would look at that picture. And Trump would look at that picture and I'm like, yeah, he's either going to say what? Yeah, I don't remember that. Or that's not me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, look at them. They're actually pretty hot. So what does that say about me? He's going to say something like that. Ha, ha, ha. You yeah. move on. Mm -hmm. But DeSantis, this is going to drag one month, two months, yep. three months, four months, five months. With Trump, it's a one-day story. With mm -hmm. DeSantis, it's a six-month story. Yeah. Well, so. Here's what I can guarantee. Yeah. This Trump DeSantis story, yeah. it ain't going away anytime soon. Oh, no. Gonna it's going to get hotter and hotter. Next 18 months. Oh, yeah. Get used to it. Buckle up. Yeah, Pat. What'd you mention about AOC? What did she? What she was talking about the Hunter Biden laptop? Yeah, she said that she it. was saying and, and during say, the Twitter hearing. Yeah, can I say one thing? Because the, there's a lot of that going on right now. All the all the House Judiciary hearings about Twitter and all that. Yeah, I want to say one thing. Why the Hunter Biden laptop is so important? Okay, because what people fail to understand, it's that whole story isn't about the crackhead painter son of the president. It's about the president of the United States while he was in that laptop has all these dealings with the big guy, Tom, that is with China, with Ukraine, and with Russia. 
That see, they're listening to us. And what pe- people don't realize is what's going on on the global stage right now. We're we're giving all these billions of dollars to Ukraine to fight Russia. China is flying freaking uh, spy balloons over, and we don't do nothing to them. You understand what I'm saying, Tom? Like he is so compromised, and that's why that story. And I hate because I have liberal friends, Pat, that keep going. Here you go again, the Hunter Biden time. I go. I don't give a shit about Hunter. His father is all all in there, and they're doing everything they can to stop it. I just hope those investigations that you're talking about come out, because like you said with Trump's saying he's right, Pat, that idiot left these laptops in, in that Delaware spot. Yeah. Everything is on there pointing at his father and him, and he was the bag man, and nobody gives a by, shit. By the way. It's he, the year of investigation. Well, let's see. Uh, hopefully it, it, it ramps up. I'm telling you. I said this January 1st. This is the year of investigations. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a very shitty year in that in that regard. Mm-hmm. But but I'm going to tell you two things, and then we go off this, and we go into some serious topics like Super Bowl predictions. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, here's here's what I'll say to you. If you're in the camp, in the camp, everybody has skeletons in the closet. So what the camp doesn't do is investigate each other. Okay, let me let me kind of right. unpack this. Yeah, when you're in the camp. Whether you're McConnell or you're Schumer, whether you're Pelosi or you're McCarthy, whether you're whoever, if you're in the camp, you don't investigate each other's to put him in jail and to do all that stuff. It's like a code. Got you. You don't it's do like it. mafia stuff. It's Omerta exactly. stuff that you'll do. Well, let's play yeah. politics. We got to raise money and da 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 da. So mm-hmm. then they out certain people who don't want to be in the camp. Okay. When somebody outside of the camp comes in and doesn't want to play the rules of the camp, they will go after you and take you to court. Trump's not in the camp. Okay? Mm-hmm. DeSantis, they would much rather prefer dealing with DeSantis. Yale, who's gone to Yale? Bush, Kerry. So Yale, you got Congress, you got Navy SEAL military. In the military, you have to learn chain of command. I mean, mm-hmm. there is that. There is no chain of command. He's of free a company enterprise. man. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's not, I'm not just saying that, but it's going to be a lot easier dealing with a DeSantis. Scent of a woman. It's going to be a lot yeah. easier Good. dealing with DeSantis than yeah. it's going to be to deal with Trump. Exactly. So 100%, they would much rather prefer DeSantis as a pre- president than Trump because you understand the code. Yeah. Okay. There's, you know, you know how kind of like Roland Martin was here the other day. He says, "When's the last time you saw cops, you know, whistle blowing on each other?" Da 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 da. Okay. Guess what? Maybe there's some truth behind that. Yeah, of course. Right. Of so course. there's also some truth behind politicians, kind of yeah. doing that to yeah. each other. So I don't know. You know, obviously, it, it, listen. This is why we run businesses. We do podcasts. We have opinions. This is not CNN. This is not Fox. We're just talking. Yeah. We're regular people like everybody else, and. We're sharing our thoughts and opinions with you, and it seems to me when I see the viewers, it keeps climbing, and more of you guys want to hear conversations like this because some of you guys may sit there and say your OG soy boy community. Some of yeah. you may say, Sorry. I relate to Doc, which we can't wait for his show to be released here soon. That's going to be sick on Mondays. We'll release it. We'll tell, tell the details here soon. It's coming very, very soon. You know, Some are coming here because they want to see what you know our sniper Vinny has mm-hmm. to say, yeah. you know, and and but but or some come here for Malik for Rob, you know. Well, we, I, we Rob, just have to know who Rob. knows. I mean, especially yeah. after no, last week. No, but, nobody's nobody. But regardless, let's let's finish Malik. it up here with some Super Bowl predictions. Yes. Let's finish it up here with some. Can we put a poll, Rob? Put a poll. Who's going to win the Super Bowl, Eagles or the Chiefs? And so, with that being said, Adam, since you brought this up, this was your suggestion because our audience loves yeah. sports. Tell us yeah, who you think is going to win. Yeah, it was definitely my idea to cover the Super Bowl. You know, this is not, it's not a big deal. It's just the Super Bowl. Um, we're talking about the best team in the AFC, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the best team in the NFC, Philadelphia Eagles, going to head-to-head. I think Philadelphia is favored by one and a half points, Philly. The Eagles, Philly one, one and a half, two points. 50. I'm gonna check right now. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm gonna lean on Philly. I think Mahomes is a little hurt. He just won MVP. I don't think there's a good case for when you win MVP, then you win the Super Bowl with Super Bowl MVP. So I think that that Philly is gonna eke it out by a couple points. Pat, let me explain something to you. I don't know if you guys saw the last game with KFC. Kentucky Fried Chicken, I call him. <laughs> okay. um, guess what? The script has already been written. Patrick Mahomes, who's his biggest sponsor? Who's he sponsored? Who's his sponsor? Patrick Mahomes. 
Who's his biggest? Uh, All State. Uh, State Farm. State Farm. Guess where the game, guess what stadium they're playing in? State Farm. Chiefs win by a touchdown. 100%. Look at that. Look, that's it's already right there. written, homie. Shh. It's Insider written. information. Patrick, yes. it's been written. You, last... saw, you saw the horrible calls in the last game? Yeah. It's come on, Tom, bro. Who's winning it? Who's winning it, Tom? 31 27, Philly, and Mahomes is coming back, making it close. If there's another three minutes in the game, he wins it. Oh, man. So here's here's what I think. So I think happen. Philly's going to get out in front, and I think you're going to. So see we got it. two Phillies, we got one KFC. PBD. I'm going to do what the better did yesterday. I'm going to go with the Bengals. I think the Bengals. Are Bengals. <laughs> and we'll give you eight and a half. Eight and a half? I'll put 10 million on it. <laughs> Joe Burrow. <laughs> no, I think, listen, I like the love, the feistiness of Mahomes. Okay. Obviously, I was cheering for Joe Burrow to beat him because I'm a Burrow guy. I love Burrow. I think Burrow is a chip on the shoulder away from whooping on everybody for a decade if he can get that chip on the shoulder. But the way Mahomes plays, Mahomes gives me the vibe of Kobe, MJ, the attitude, the energy. He's got that Brady angry, wants to beat you. Like his eyes are like this, middle of the game. They're down a touchdown. He's not afraid. He's staying solid. Like it's a very, very unique characteristic mm. that he has. Eagles have an incredible defense. Uh, I love the fact how poised their quarterback is. But I have a feeling Mahomes is going to win a second Super Bowl because Mahomes got one target. I think he's going after Brady. Uh, you know, the other day when Brady announced his retirement, Mahomes posted on the bottom in the comment section, the GOAT, which was great to see Mahomes giving yeah. a shout-out of the GOAT. Mm -hmm. But you're seeing the other day when LeBron passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in points, and Shaq was asking uh, uh, LeBron the question, so say, so tell, tell me, young brother, you know, you know so what do you think is going to be the good? He says, man, I see myself as the greatest player of all time. I see, like LeBron said this, oh, right? Really? LeBron sees himself as the greatest player of all time. I think he's the second greatest player of all time, but LeBron sees himself as the greatest player of all time. I think Mahomes wants to prove a point. And what better year for Mahomes to win it than the year Brady retired? Wow. You got to mm. win the championship Talk the year about Brady retired. That that is, so, it's going to be right, I don't know. That's a great point. So it's two so and two. We two and two. So we have to have our friend Malik. Hey, Malik, hey, 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 Rob, for, you got to break this tie. So there's a Super Rob, Bowl this weekend. Rob Sixers. is going to go with all the way. Glendale <laughs> High School second. Nitro. So Rob's not even. Rob, Rob do you follow you got, football Rob? at all or no? No, I, I like professional wrestling. Okay. Nobody cares about that. You look like Jim the Anvil Nightheart. I know that's an insult, but I take it as a compliment. No, that's a compliment. That beard. He looks like the Brooklyn Brawler. At least help us out and break the tie, Rob. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. There we go. Okay. What does the audience Which, have by the way, say? that kind of does make sense. And look at everybody's got 57% wow, Philadelphia, 43% yeah. uh, uh, Chiefs. I'm going underdog. I'm going know. underdog. So we'll see what happens. Anyways, gang, uh, 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 you know, sometimes I sit here and I wish we could do this five days a week where we could just my schedule does not permit for us to do this five days a week. Hopefully one day. We'll be able to do this more often because we're having a lot of fun doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you got some stuff that's going on. I know you're working on some special skits with Dylan that's going to be son. a blast. Yesterday, Jennifer's asking me, hey, Pat, uh, babe, uh, uh, Vinny's got this skit he's doing. That you came that, up with. Yeah, he says that. And she's, uh, he's asking for Dylan. Are you okay with Dylan being in a video? I said, babe, I know what skit it is. It's going to be fine. I can't wait to see it myself. Yeah, so good. it's going to be funny as hell because <laughs> you guys look like. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I'm going to dye my hair today, so, so don't judge. Anyways. Guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Be safe, and we'll do this again next week. Take care. Bye-bye, bye-bye.